We are live. Hey, it's us. Hi. Hello. Double check on. Hello, hello. I see levels doing level things. So hello. That's looking good. I like to see it. Oh, Trombone has an orange box. Mm, I gotta get the away message for him. Yep, but that's okay. That's okay. Trombone. Hello, oh, can you be heard, audience? Aw, cute little little dumpster fires. Oh, I Aww. love it. Good. So cute. That's us. We're the cute little Very dumpster nice. fires. Where are the dumpster fires? Yay. That's true. Someone the uh, has put little all of them. Red Chris MS has put little uh, little cute dumpster fire emojis in our chat. I love it. I take it the uh, audience you can hear us. <laughs> I've seen no confirmation of audio, which always makes me nervous. I I see things moving. I heard us. I had us un uh -huh. for a moment. Audio confirmed. Woo. All right. In that case, hello and welcome, internet friends and web comic fans. It's your friendly neighborhood dungeon biologist bringing you another steaming, keeping helping of trash heroes. The D D stream where we recount the epic adventures of a wildly improbable collection of horrible creatures known as the Trash Heroes. Uh, as always, our players are this wonderful collection of talented internet. Uh, artists, cartoonists, makers of things, uh, put their work uh, in the uh, set of links in the upper right. Uh, and of course, we have a special guest with us, um, so you should check out uh, the links uh, to his works as well. Um, and Howard, I don't know the, the the proper links for your stuff anymore, so yeah, maybe drop links. some. We can oh. drop some links in the chat. Blockmercenary.com. Nice. Uh, and so, uh, without further ado, let's meet the characters. Um, abs of this week, uh, thanks to the plague that's uh, ripping through the, the country uh, and planet as we speak, uh, is the uh, protector of the vermin, keeper of the vermin, protector of the trash heap, fetid quaggle. Uh, and those who are actually with us, larger than life pit fighting superstar, Ugo Sugar Tusks. It's bone crushing time. Uh, and absent, maybe joining us later, is the trickster cleric, rogue baker, and party animal, uh, Tromondaros. Next is the wild magic streaming sensation, Morgan V. Sater. Hello, hello, like, subscribe, and uh, maybe consider having me be your patron. <laughs> and of course, our sweet old grandpa, who's also accidentally an ancient warlock, Copernicus Sunshine. Horrifying catchphrase. And uh, with us again, a special guest. Uh, he's a uh, thing you're looking lawful good. Uh, it's Hollis Rockabilly. Son, I, I say, son. If you're if you're crawling dungeons with the trash heroes, you should not be licking the fingers. This is wise advice. That is very sage advice. Indeed. So when we last left our heroes, uh, live game at Gen Con. Woo! And uh, YouTube if you haven't seen it. Yeah. So those who haven't seen the live game, it is in fact available to view on YouTube. Um, we began the game with the party learning from Aurelia the Gold, Wizard of the Ordo Arcanum, that her auguries suggested that the heroes must aid the dwarves. And so the party was teleported from Galfinos to the White Tower of the Wizard's Vale to the dwarven city of Rockspire in the Iron Peak Mountains. Uh, Trey the Owlbear was left behind in the care of Dan Galf the Dun, uh, but during the teleportation, something went horribly wrong with Morgan's wild magic as I immediately cashed in a black token as the first thing I did in the live game because he 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 um and so Morgan and Trauman were separated from the others in the Feywilds as the party was lost while passing through the mists. Morgan was confronted by her aunt Shirindria, who warned her that her Fey Lord father is unhappy with her for revealing his secrets. It seems that the party has been speaking one of his names. Meanwhile, Trauman was swept to the dark places where Shadowfell and the Feywild meet, and Ugna and Copernicus could hear him uh, as they journeyed to Rockspire. 
listening to a conversation with something that called him father. Uh, which we'll have to wait still longer to find out because not Randy's not way. here. Yeah, no, in a very really not sexy way. The opposite of that. Um, these delays only took moments, however, and soon the entire party, minus Tromlin, found themselves in the great library of the dwarves, the Athenium, surrounded by dwarven sages and their old friend, Hollis Rockabilly. Uh, there they learned that the dwarves had been suffering raids of black-eyed goblins and kobolds from the Underdark, most recently in the library itself. And they had kidnapped Udma's friend, Sal Shattersmith, who had come to the dwarves to research rune magic on her behalf. Uh, Hollis... Yeah, exactly. Um, your your uh, lifelong friend, I think, or true friend, is what the merit says on your character sheet. Um, uh, Hollis had been tasked with the investigation, but was hard-pressed by fussy dwarven merchants who were hostile to the king, members of House Glacius, who were not pleased with the lack of progress on the case. Um, when Copernicus then tried to speak with the dead uh, on the fallen goblins, his mind was temporarily invaded by a dark shadow that lingered within the corpse, a shadow that he perhaps remembers uh, from other times in the misty past. Um, with no other leads to follow, the party set off with Hollis down the purple worm tunnels made by the goblins, fighting past enormous black pudding, and eventually stumbling upon part of the raiding party that had been killed by none other than your old friend Gary the Boer. Good old Gary Igax, uh, as he was dubbed. Uh, and I blame the players for that. I just called him Gary. I think, um, I think I, I'm responsible for that one. I think it is, in fact, your fault. Uh, there was no sign of Sal, but Fed had managed to spot a stray parchment that had been dropped by the goblins, and it was, in fact, the last fragment of the Elenath, which Copernicus then translated, and we ended the live game uh, with the complete poem, uh, which goes, uh, There was one who said unto me that the universe would cause my body to tremble, and that my spirit is not like unto the keenest of blades. This one had a visage, it seemed to me, as of a fool, displaying first and second digits in the sign of Laguz, held closely upon the admitted brow. Behold, the count of years commences and does not cease. Feasted upon by Temis, I cast myself upon the earth and fled. There is no truth to be held in living joyless. The mind accrues wisdom, but the heart accrues foolishness. There is much to be done and much to be seen, and thus no harm in taking a circuitous route. One remains in ignorance if one does not begin the journey. One cannot shine glorious without first embracing the light. And as Copernicus reads out those stanzas, uh, the various fragments that you have collected of uh, from the various books and scribes that you have uh, encountered uh, over the past year, uh, all of the text begins faintly to glow. I think that's where we left it. If I, if I may, um, reading magic and then having the pages come together and light up is typically either a very good thing or a very bad thing. And... I, I must confess ignorance as to as to the value state at the moment because I am unfamiliar with how you may have acquired these pages. I mean, don't look at me. Magic never makes any sense to me. And, and the Elnath is in Elvish. Is that right? Uh, I believe it was like in an old, like an ancient form of Elvish. Okay. Um. Uh, you know, we've certainly found um, fragments of the Elenath in some unsavory places, um, but I, I don't think the poem itself is uh, inherently um, uh, evil, but, um, you know, perhaps we can do some arcana about it and, and find out what's going on here. I'd like to do some arcana about it and find out what's going on here. Well, interesting. Um, like, a, like a help action from anyone who wants to help. Uh, as you do so, uh, the runes all immediately uh, fade and the glowing stops. Um, 
And go ahead and make your arcana check while that happens to see what's going on. 27. That is an extremely good arcana roll. Um, you immediately you realize that you have enacted some sort of um, magical ritual. You're not sure if you've done the the proper ritual. This seems like ritual magic to you. Um, so it's it's possible that the full effect was not enacted because you there are likely other aspects required and not just reading it out. Um, but you do in fact read out uh, the stanzas of a magical poem. Um, and so a magical effect began, uh, but you quickly realize that uh, Gary is curiously looking over your shoulder uh, as you talk about this, um, and the anti-magic eye of the beholder has shut down whatever was happening. Of course. As, and, and he kind of, um, like, as he's like, there's this giant eye like peering over your shoulder as he floats there, and he goes, uh, what do you got there? Well, it's an ancient magical poem. Morgan is going to move out of the range of Gary so that she can continue pr casting prestidigitation to get all of this fucking goo off of her body. <laughs> just like, mm -hmm. I'm sure they can help you with the poem, okay? I just need a minute. And she, she like, goes and is just, like, trying to cast prestidigitation until she's outside of that bubble. So at this point, um, an arrow is about to come flying out of the shadows uh, towards the party. Um, but before I have any more initiative or anything, uh, I just wanted to, I'm just pulling up, remind myself, yes, um, Hollis, your shield of missile attraction Ooh. Um is going to ensure that this arrow has to target you rather than any of your friends because they are all within 10 feet of you. Because we're all looking at a single page. Yep. And of course you have, uh, with this uh, shield, resistance to ranged weapon attack damage. So I'm going to roll the hit roll to see if it even gets past your insane armor class. Yeah, your AC is bonkers. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, because your armor class is 22. Um, and the roll on the die is a 14. I don't think there's a plus 8 behind this attack. Um, so uh, the arrow attracted by your shield then ricochets off of it and into a wall. Um, and with that, everyone can roll initiative. Right. It's the surprise attack does nothing. Um, actually, you know what? There's several of them. I'm just going to... See if any, yeah. In <laughs> fact, in fact, four arrows come shooting out of the darkness and ricochet harmlessly off of your shield. Yay! One of them misses entirely. Like one of them was like a three. Chico, Chico, must you bite my mouse? I, I would not. He says, "I am bird and therefore must bite." Must bite all the things. Must bite things. I'm just gonna. An initiative roll, please. Sage and What's hope that, that I don't get copied. My my rolls, I hope that they're a lot better than they were at Gen Con. Oh my god. Mine aren't, so it's a great start. Oh, that one is oh. that one is already a, a ton better. You know, it's not looking great when people can hold their hands up to give you all their, their yeah. numbers. I got a dirty 20. Woo! Ooh. Nice. I rolled an extremely dirty three. <laughs> oh, no. No. I thought I was going last. I guess you have a bonus, though. Whereas four is my grand total, because I rolled a two. Well, oh, I've got no bonus. Yeah, um, yeah full armor dwarves don't tend to have a lot of initiative yeah, bonuses. Nice. Um, pickle, 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 pickle. Settle down. Uh, somebody want to roll four fetid for me? Sure. I got a ten on the die. Nice. Okay, he is, and fortunately, his character sheet isn't open, so I gotta re, I gotta adjust that fact. Uh, he has a plus five to initiative, Ooh. so that becomes a fifteen, and of course, 
first off, though, Morgan with mm-hmm. the Dirty 20, um, and I'll actually let the players roll. Someone want to roll for Gary for me. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's there. Gary. Initiative roll? Yeah. I rolled a one. Does Gary <laughs> want my one? Uh, I mean, I'll take the first thing rolled. That's fine. Yeah. Gary's not really on board with this. He's very... He's looking the other he's, way. He lost contact. Yeah, he's kind of a little... It's not his like eyes are, his, his, Yeah, his main eye's a little dry. Yeah. Exactly. I do not miss contact lenses. Well, he's still blinking. Pico. All right. Pico, bud. Sorry. Absolutely not. Do not eat that. <laughs> do, 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 do. He has a plus can I, two. Can I put out something very weird about this stream already? Mm-hmm. Peter's not in a cardigan, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Peter's not in a cardigan. That is so strange to me. It's strange to Weird. Say. Yeah. Maybe we've got an imposter. I feel like that's a possibility. <laughs> does he have a goatee? So everyone... He does have a goatee. Except, <laughs> have a goatee. <laughs> except, the, but, except the fact that I, I always wear cardigans. They sometimes miss the, uh, but... the impersonation evidence. Peter always has the beard, though. Like, it, it, if it was evil Peter, he would have no... He would be clean-shaven. That's oh. how we would know. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait! Have we always had evil Peter? Maybe. No. <laughs> yes, we've always had evil Peter. Nice, Maybe it's I've just made a... many harmful decisions on this stream. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, you're I'm very speaking as an occasional guest who, who does have some evil sensing abilities. I'm pretty sure that Peter wears the goatee for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, first up, Morgan. Mm. Um, you can even like, somewhere in the darkness down the corridor, uh, this hail of arrows came flying out uh, uh, at the party. Um, and for some reason, all of the arrows went directly towards Paulus and ricocheted off of his shield harmlessly. I appreciate that uh, immensely. So much. I appreciate um, it so much. And I would also like to throw something at them. Um... So right now you're you're fighting blind because you can't see where they are down there, just somewhere in the shadows. Uh, that's why I love the AOEs. Um, that's what I hear. I would like to send out a storm sphere. We all know that's what AOC stands for, right? Area of Cortez. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Um, a storm sphere. Uh, how far down the road do you want to chuck it? Uh, I would know the general range of... I would assume that this is not a long-range bow. Yeah, I mean, you've seen, bow. yeah, you've seen some of these goblins carrying short bows. I would put it at short bow range, uh, and I want to basically be outside the storm sphere itself. Um, I'm going to get you to roll me some, some knowledge kind of checks here. So yeah. You're not proficient with uh, martial weapons. No. Um, Although his shirt was considered a simple weapon, so maybe... Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to make it a relatively easy roll. Mm-hmm. Um, is that wits? Is that... Uh, you're rolling... Um, uh, this is your knowledge, so you're rolling an int check. All right. All so right. not your forte. Straight roll, straight roll. Uh, that is a 10. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're, you're guessing maybe... Uh, the longer range of the storm sphere. Storm sphere remembers 150 feet range. Yeah. Um, but I believe it has to be. Uh, no, it does not have to be within sight. Um, so I, you can just kind of. I think uh, the storm sphere itself is pretty big. Um, it's a 20 foot radius. So yeah, it's a 40 foot area. Um. Yeah, I will put it uh, 30 feet... I will be 30 feet outside of it. Does that sound okay. good? Yeah, so it will extend for about uh, 30 feet to 70 feet down and the tunnel from do, you guys. Do I... 
would I think that I have to remain outside of Gary's anti magi sphere for concentration? Um, no, the spell does. Okay. So you can continue to concentrate and cast the spell. If the beholder looks at you, it doesn't affect the spell. If the beholder looks at the spell area, it affects the spell. Because it's it's a cone effect, right? So it's within the cone. Okay. Um, <laughs> Tell I wouldn't. His damn eyes. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'll I'll actually go over to um. Uh, by Gary because he's also uh, a big shield, and I'll be like, hide over here with me. Um, and I'll be like, damn, what's that? And I'll just be looking at like a pebble by my foot. Uh. <laughs> Trying to get Gary to look the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Uh, I'll 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 not call out a free action after you cast a spell uh, on uh, a social. Let's let's make um, let's make a deception check here. Uh, to I'll keep... be like. Yeah, I'll be like, you think, you want it. I'll be like, I was thinking of of dying like the the poof fur around my ankles pink. Like, what do you think? And I'll just be like just showing ankle like the fucking slut yeah. I am. Um and uh is that deception or persuasion? Yeah, just said? just disruption. Okay. You're just trying to keep him preoccupied. All right. You're pretty good at this. Um, that is a six on the die, and deception is plus eight. Okay, that he's got a, an insight against that, so that's not a great roll. Are you are you standing on that roll? Um. Oh, you are with inspirations. Got, I am. Oh, Luna, um, you can you uh, you can update that black token though, because I used it at the game. So you can yeah, get rid of that not black token. To what's, what happened at the game? If he, six, I don't know. I, if he succeeds against me, I don't mind using my silvery barbs to give um, Ugna um, advantage. Uh, let me double check silvery barbs because I don't remember if you can use it on a skill check. If you can, then you can totally do that. Um, it's against successful saving throw or skill. Um, yeah, ability, ability check. check or saving yeah, yeah. Throw, yeah. So he did, in fact, beat you on the on. So you're going to force him to reroll his um his insight check against you, and he did roll lower. So that was actually probably worth doing. So you, you used everything now. You used oh, your yeah, reaction yeah. to do that. Um. Yeah. So yes, he um. I mean, technically, the action happens on someone else's turn rather than yours, but, like, that's just weird. Yeah. Weird, broken D&D rules. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, you get him looking, uh, you get him, like, checking out the, you know, there's a storm suddenly pops up down the tunnel, and there's, like, howling wind. I'm like, ooh, look at these runes. Isn't that weird? Oh, wait, and... I think those are just scratch marks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So next up is Fetid, um, and Fetid uh, is going to um, uh, is going to run up the tunnel to where he had seen a, a side branch uh, and take cover there with Ollie. So he disappears down that side tunnel to take cover from potential arrow fire. Not realizing that if he goes out of ten feet of Hollis, Hollis is no longer the magnet for the the arrows. But he's not that it matters. But if he's around the corner, it kind of doesn't matter. Uh, next up is Copernicus. Um, so I'm pretty sure I, I know that my hit point total after the last session was sixteen. I'm pretty sure I had no spell slots. So um, I think what Perny would like to do. Uh, is attempt to remember um, what he knows about Beholder Anatomy and be likely to guess which eye has the disintegration ray. And then he might just try and grab it like a hose and turn it on. Uh... <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so most, uh, the Volo Guide to Monsters version of uh, the Beholder uses random dice rolls for what the different eye beam effects are. But the implication is not that each eye ra has a random effect, but rather 
random eyes. Which eye fires? Look me an arcana check, but this is a tough one. I need another 27, baby. I, I believe need a really good. Daddy's using an inspiration. Oh. <laughs> I will mark that off in a second. You're distracted by bird. I got a bird on my hand. That saying. would be a 21. Ooh. 21 isn't terrible. Also, I will did... give you... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this like the wild magic rolls. Um, I'm going to roll randomly for what you get. But I'm going to roll twice. I'm going to get you to roll. I'm going to roll twice. And then I'm going to let you choose which of the two. So you're grabbing, trying to figure out which eye boom is which. And you're trying to grab a stock to aim in that direction. Yeah. Um, so I'm rolling a d10 twice and I'm telling you the number each time? Or am I rolling a d a percentile die? Yeah, I'm just trying to check in which, which dice roll it is. Da, 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 da. Also, we did get oh, this to is... enlarge emotes as bit redemptions. I don't know if they automatically got added to our thing or if we got to manually oh. do it. Did you see that Twitch is upping the um, subscriber price and also the bit prices again? Ugh, the worst. It's going up like quite a lot. I'm so sorry, y'all. I got no control over that, that, but it sucks. Hang on a second. I've lost my my uh, copy of the the beholder stats. Here we go. The beholder chooses. Uh, yes. So D10, please. Okay. So we've got a five and. And then a second time. A five and a four. Okay, so your choices are slowing or innovation. What's the second one? Innovation. Uh, so the innovation does uh, necrotic damage. The slowing is a slow spell effect. Let's do some necrotic, please. Okay. Your brand. Oh yeah, and I, and I grab. Um, so I grab the two eye stocks uh, from Gary. I'm like, um, Gary, we're just going to have to do um, an, an improvised battlefield uh, examination to make sure that your eyes weren't hurt from losing the uh, contact. So uh, tell me, does these things look better or worse? <laughs> better. <laughs> Or worse. Um, and I optometrize him. Nice. Okay, so because you're using uh, the array that normally does not have an attack roll, um, but you're going blind, because so normally the effect of this is it has to be a target he can see. And since the targets are up, up and hidden away uh, down the tunnel in the darkness, um, you guys haven't been able to see them yet. Uh, and the storm, if anything, is going to make it worse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you roll with disadvantage as though you were taking a blind shot with a ranged weapon. Uh, I'm going to let you use your uh, your spell ta attack bonus here. Okay. So you're very gracious. You're a very gracious GM. Don't let anyone tell you different. Um, here we go. So the first roll is a 26. That's a pretty solid roll. Second roll is a 19. So that's still a really solid roll, and that 19 will, will make it, despite these guys being very uh, um, cunning and swift uh, and, and in cover. Uh, so you actually manage to tag something. You hear uh, a scream. Uh, I'll roll the saving throw. Please roll me 8d8 necrotic damage. Okay, I'm gonna do that digitally. Ooh, I'm gonna roll get... my my bludgeoning damage for the thing for the people to take half of or take. Yes, actually, of. that that was an instant. So yeah, just so we know how much it is. Rolled very well. Uh, Holy 45, crap! Forty-five points of damage. I rolled really well too. Um, What'd you get for the bludgeoning? Um, uh, 12, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 26 bludgeoning damage. Uh, against a, a strength saving throw versus... Uh, I think you're rolling the wrong number of dice. It's 2d6. Um, oh, my god. Why did I roll six? All right. yeah. That would be nice. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, all right. 
Uh, da -da -da. uh that is a eight. <clears throat> eight for bludgeoning damage. Okay. Um, so you can't tell if anything's being hit by the bludgeoning of, of rocks and pebbles and things being swept around by the winds. You also weren't able to use your bonus action to fire the lightning at anything because you can't see down there to know what targets were available. Um, uh, however, with that innovation roll, you actually hear a scream uh, as something down there gets tagged in the darkness. Um, and Gary goes, hey, ow, my eye. <laughs> You just you gotta test uh, the blood pressure. It's like a little puff of air from the machine, right? You need dilation. The dilation medicine on the beholder. All of the all of the wings would become cones. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you do not want a cone of disintegration. Terrible, terrible idea. Uh, next up is Ubna. Did we bring a torch or a lantern with us? Uh, certainly. In fact, uh, uh, Hollis has a magical uh, lantern that's like a, a thieves lantern. It has like shutters that you can open and direct the beams, and then it's got a magical light uh, spell inside of it, so it's it never goes out. Um, and then, if any of the rest of you could have grabbed a torch at any point from the library on your way down, you guys, you guys have to remember that we're always fully stocked on wolf lights too. I mean, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think those will they, illuminate anything uh, that we yeah. want illuminated. No, that yeah, they're they're. I would say that the the blue light effect on there is secondary to its primary use. Yeah, but okay. for sure, it is a torch. Well, okay. Uh, I'm gonna randomize here. Uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Cool, 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 cool. So, what this looks like to everybody is Ugna goes to do her usual thing and put herself in front of the group to to tank and take damage, but Hollis is there already, um, and so yep. she kind of like stops, uh, looks at the beholder being beams going down the aisle and decides not to run down there either, uh, which is probably the smartest thing she's done all day, and then she will grab at the torch out of uh, or the law light out of Morgan's hand and just whip it as far down the corridor as she can, which with the 20 strength is far. Um, you also had, have advantage from uh, my silvery barbs. Cool. Which is good because you have disadvantage from the storm sphere. So yes. roll, me, um, roll me an attack roll. Just even because it's up one and down one? Yeah. Um, actually, it's down another one, so it's going to be disadvantage Alina? because you're going Alina? beyond with moral range. Alina, do you have a hero point to spend? <laughs> I don't know if this calls for it, but uh, um, but, it is wait, 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 wait. No, no, but how this spend... lands, though? How, like, just consider you throwing this into the darkness and how it could possibly land if you critical. Um, so just try and critical, okay? If you want to spend <laughs> inspiration, you can counter the disadvantage and just roll straight. I, I do think in fifth ed to be oh. to if, if I may approach the bench, Your Honor. Uh, in you fifth mean. ed, I think there's just advantage and disadvantage in the cancel. There's no stacks. They don't stack. So just if you have advantage in multiple sources of multiple, it's just supposed to even out to neutral, no matter how many are stacked on one side. Yeah, which is really dumb, and I've kind of been You're ignoring that. It. All right, I, yeah. I will uh, abide by your judgment, Your Honor. Well, you already have advantage from silvery barbs. No, they, they don't so stack, and so yeah, there's um. So the original interpretation that a lot of people were going with from the way it's, the rules are written is that they don't stack in the sense that you don't like roll another extra die with another advantage or roll a, an extra disadvantage die. Um, but if you have multiple sources of cancellation, uh, you well having two disadvantages matters if you can only cancel one of them. Um, I will indeed. Then, inspiration, if that is yeah, then okay. Jerry Craw came along and said, no, no, it just doesn't do anything if you have more than one, which is really lame because there are so many things that give you sources of inspiration yeah, and, and just don't do disadvantage. Anything. It just means, which means that they just don't do anything. So I've spent um, inspiration. I'm going with just a flat so yeah. roll. Wish me luck, y'all. That is an 18. 
Okay. Plus my, so, uh, if it's an attack roll, plus eight? Yeah. Plus my it would, fact, it would be considered my attack roll. You have six. improvised weapons, so even if I didn't count this as a real, uh, a martial weapon, you'd still have yep. professional models. So, so you I grab a silicone light up torch. tube, and I just... Oh, one of those, yeah. It goes like, wait, 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 wait. And over and, and as soon as it hits the edge of the storm sphere, about 30 feet away, uh, it starts going careening wildly as the winds catch it. But it has so much force behind it that the winds just bounce it off the walls. And it just goes, it just goes ping, 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 and ricochets rolling down. Now, I believe a throw... smack somebody in the face for no damage but comedic effect? Uh, possibly, but let's find out how far it goes. Just leaving, uh, like, a, a moist patch. They're popular because they're also waterproof. Like, they're the best torch, really, when you think about it. So a thrown weapon has a range based on strength, right? Yep. And I have... Okay, improvised thrown weapon has a normal range of 20 feet with a long range of 60 feet. Okay, so the strength roll determines whether we can extend that range. So the disadvantage was saying that it was you're going over 20 feet. Yeah. Is the is the the basics of it. Um but I do have brawler, so I am proficient in uh on yeah. improvised weapons, which we've yeah. already added. Which is why you got your bonus. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say that with that roll and your strength of 20 and your uh, your larger than normal size feet uh, or feature, which gives you um, uh, strength related bonuses of being a larger creature, mm -hmm. uh, large rather than medium, I'm going to say you end up throwing it double the normal maximum range of a thrown uh, weapon and it goes 120 feet down the corridor so you can see and it hits the, the storm sphere there's a wind it goes all the way through the storm sphere 70 feet on the other side of the storm sphere there are various fallen rocks so as it goes down you see two openings one in either side of the corridor the one fairly close to you that fended duck down and the one further down that goes the other way Beyond the storm sphere, there are a series of rocks as the cavern widens, and there are various of these shadowy goblin and kobold figures with their jet black eyes crouching behind the rocks with, with bows. Um, uh, they, at the same time that you throw this, because they rolled the same initiative, um, are firing another volley of arrows. Most of the arrows fail to even get down the corridor because they all have to fire with disadvantage through the storm sphere. Um, the ones that make it through the storm sphere, I'm rolling with disadvantage uh, once again because you're all within 10 feet of Hollis. Uh, they are going to be attracted to him as a target, but they're going to have disadvantage on the rolls to beat his armor class. Which means... A total of one arrow does not just harmlessly ricochet off of his shield or armor. Um, so Hollis gets tagged by a single arrow out of this volley of uh, quite a few, ten arrows at least, firing into the storm and variously are blown into the walls or ricochet off of Hollis's uh, shield and armor. I have not used my reaction yet. I would like to use my intercept to reduce whatever damage he takes by 1d10 plus 3. Nice. Excellent. Uh, please do, in fact, roll that, that. that. I rolled a 9, so 9 plus 3 is 12. That is more than the max damage that I can roll on this arrow. <laughs> um, so it, oh, uh, this it's like curls hurls the fleshlight into the storm and the storm whips back an arrow and Ugna just catches it before it hits. Basically. <laughs> Ugna catches it in yet another loaf light. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick question. How how tall is Ugna exactly? I believe she is seven foot two. Yeah. Very hunched over in this court in this uh tunnel. 
Okay. Because Hollis is only four foot six. That's true. Um, no, I'm trying to decide how this works. There, the rest of our there is a, there is a poison on this arrow. Ooh. And I'm trying to decide if I want to say that your damage reduction means that the arrow never did me, never actually hit Hollis, and therefore the poison has no effect, or if the poison is like part of the damage, because the poison does have its own damage effect. Um, I think I'm going to go with B. I think that's what makes more sense, because this reduces the damage taken. So, uh, Howard, go ahead and make me a poison uh, or, or constitution saving throw. You're very silly. Uh, and I believe you get uh, advantage because of your yep. uh, dwarven resistance. Yep. So, give me two rolls well, and your best. If either roll had been more than a 10, uh, that would have meant something. Okay. Now you also have resistance to poison damage. Yep. Work. Um. So you will have the poisoned, um, uh, condition from this attack, but the damage with the arrow and the damage done, your resistance applies first, then Ugnan's reduction. Means that although you have the poison condition, you actually take zero damage. <laughs> so one one poison arrow manages to graze a shoulder between pauldron and chain, um, and you feel the burning sensation. Um, but uh, uh, Ugna swats the arrow before it uh, it it sticks in the flesh uh, away from you, and you don't. You kind of shrug it off and are like going, ah, goblins are poison. Worse. I've been hurt worse shaving. And that is why I stopped shaving. <laughs> it is a magnificent beard. Um, Ugna, you have a second at uh, attack if you're... I sure do. Throwing the um, torch sounds uh, counts as an attack, so you have yep. a second. Is there any... Um... You have improvised weapon, right? Yeah, I do. Are there like loose stones or? Uh... You could quick draw the dwarf. <laughs> I don't know. I've been trying not to go down the corridor because we are firing off beholder beams. There is a there is also a stone sphere between you and them. That's true. That will hit a lot of people. Um, you do have a ranged weapon on you. I do. And and in, in this moment. You were able to see them as you threw the light down there. Then I think it is hammer time. Okay. Uh, Uga pulls on some big puffy parachute pants yes. uh, and sunglasses uh, and does a side to side dance shuffle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, wait, that's your turn. No, yes. sorry. Second attack. And then you um, have to stop. You said it was hammer advantage? time. Uh, yes. Stop, stop, right, and listen, that's you got to do all three. Oh my goodness. Okay, so yeah, uh, you can you're at long range. Yep. Yeah. What's your range on the throne hammer? Hammer is um twenty sixty. Yeah. So sixty is the normal maximum range you can throw it. Um, however, I'm going to let you do the same thing with a strength roll to try and get it to go farther. Cool. So should I roll strength first? Uh, I think I was just doing it as the attack. Yeah, roll, roll me a strength, uh, roll me an athletics check first to see how far you can throw this thing. <laughs> uh, just straight plus five, or is it my athletics? So it's the full 11. Uh, full, the full 11. 28? Yeah. Yeah, um, I think you are going to need to move forward. I think you're going to need to use your movement to get to the edge of the storm sphere. Okay. Um, and then throw it. Uh, and then you'll just kind of have the range because that'll give you. Yeah, that'll be 90 feet with normal range. With the extra from that roll, you'll be able to get it in amongst them. Awesome. Uh, I'm assuming Slide you're trying to do the area yeah. attack. I 
Okay. So spending a charge. Yep. Uh, this is going to have a thunder wave effect uh, in a circle from where it hits. And am I at disadvantage or a straight roll? Um, yeah, make me a roll with disadvantage. Like, there's a lot of factors to play long range and the uh, the storm. Oh, 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 so I did roll an at 20, but I also rolled a 16 plus uh, 10. So that's 26, even with disadvantage. I will let you spend the inspiration to counter this advantage if you want to. How and then I'll let the that 20 stand. How much do we want this, y'all? That's or fucking dope as fuck. Do it. That, yeah, do, it. Good. do it. That's pretty good. Do it. Head through a storm sphere. Is yeah, good. let's do it. Okay, in that case, you are going to double your damage. <laughs> um, I can imagine so... it, like, flying through, and the wind, like, curving it slightly, and that, like, because they're, we're both thunder and lightning people, it's like sparking as it goes through and get, gets in there. I'm going to need a digital roller because this is 68, which is a lot more DS. No, no, no. Than That's the single target. Well, you're, single rolling, target. That's right. you're rolling 48 thunder damage. 48. And they get to save for half. If they fail their saving through, they take full and are pushed 10 feet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have rolled a 24. Oh, 24 damage. Okay. I have rolled spectacularly well. I cannot... Wow. <laughs> Two nat 20s in this roll, in this set of rolls. Um, all of the ones that were in range made their saving throw. Um, but I've just wasted a lot of amazing rolls. Two 20s, an 18, uh, and a 15 and a 14 with their bonuses will make the rolls. Um, so they all need their constitution saves. None of them are pushed, but they, and they all take half damage, but you cleared, so you do double damage. That's true. So your 24 damage stands, which is going to take out, like, probably most of them. Um, so there's an explosion of thunder where the hammer strikes amongst the rocks, and various goblins and kobolds go flying through the air and various states of shattered body uh, down at that end of the corner. Um, and you hear uh, just a series of shrieks uh, as the rest of them begin uh, fleeing. Uh, and there's um, a crackle of thunder, and the hammer appears back in my hand. Yep. Uh, Hollis, you are next. Two quick questions. Yep. One, are these attacks coming from the direction that we want to go? I mean, generally, you, you, were, you were tracking this party of goblins and kobolds. You seem to have found them. Um, okay. So it's, a, you know, it's up to you where you want to go from here. Uh, but basically, yes, the direction that, that, that you were going is where they're coming from. Second question. Between the passive perception bonus, the general stoneworking bonus for dwarves, the dark vision, and the fact that all of their initial attacks hit my shield. Yep. If I roll a 23 perception, what can you tell me about the party that's attacking us? Ooh. A lot. Um, I would say with that role and with all of the knowledges you have, you have a pretty good idea, um, uh, where they're headed. You have a pretty good idea that they are likely to have, um, um, not reinforcements, what's we're looking for? Um, like not battlements, defenses, like, um. Um, firms. Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna have they're gonna have things further down. The way that they're going in that direction, they're going to eventually be reaching uh, fortifications. That's the word I was looking for. Um, but you know that the one of these side tunnels is a good way to get around that uh those fortifications and come at them uh it's from behind. Nice. Oh no. Oh no, it's Pico the Barbarian. He wants to be returned. Yep. 
Someday I'm going to write up a character sheet for Pico the Barbarian. Good. I have a picture of Pico it, the Barbarian somewhere. Hee hee hee. Um, my ex. Uh, okay, then. Yeah, and here's you also my have a, here's my really good idea how many there are, too. 24 persuasion. Shield up. Pointing. My friends. Move down the side passage. We shall flank these folks. And I will go last and uh, sponge as many of these pointy things as they care to launch in our direction. Because I have no ranged weapons. I can't attack. Yeah. I'm using my whole action to just call shots for the party. Excellent. Yes. And now you get to decide if I was persuasive enough. Uh, yeah, go ahead and show me a persuasion roll. I did. It was a oh, 24. 24. That is Beautiful. really good. I did already have a plan, so I will oppose roll. No, we need to roll. So this is not um, forcing anyone to do anything. What I'm, what I'm treating this as is like a leadership role. Mm -hmm. He is going to give everyone bonuses mm -hmm. to whatever you guys are going to do now. By basically... Give what you the should do is run down the side passage yeah. as part of a flanking maneuver because the, the enemy won't see that coming. Uh, but, but I was just going to go beside them with Ugna. It makes good sense, though, for, for example, if, if a flanking maneuver is being attempted, mm -hmm. you probably want to keep the storm sphere up, right? Which, yeah. which is what you're doing right now, right? By keeping Gary from looking at it and by concentrating on it. So my, my point is that, that this plan has been put forward by Hollis, and now as you all enact the plan in whatever way seems appropriate, uh, I'm going to be giving you bonuses uh, from that, that role to coordinate effectively. Mm. Um, next up is Gary. Now, uh, you have Gary distracted, but also Gary's had his eye beam grabbed and wrenched around, uh, mm -hmm. and he's he's uh, all confused. So I'm going to roll um, a pose roll against you, uh, Morgan. So give me another deception or persuasion, whichever you prefer. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. He's going to try and figure out sort of try and make a decision of what to do himself rather than what you're trying to get him to do. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, sweetie, I know there's a lot going on, but believe me, we have it handled. If you could just focus on this point right here, and I'll light some little magical sparks for him. Um, That's a persuasion. Okay. Um, yep. Oh, that was almost a hoot growl. Um, 14 plus 8, I believe. Um, well, I rolled a 1. <laughs> so... Cool. He goes, okay, and fires a bunch of his eye beams at the sparkly magic that you just made for him. <laughs> Terrifying. Terrifying. He's, he's like, okay, yeah, yeah. if you say so, I'll, I'll zap that, whatever that is. We were just testing out his eye beams. This is a very yeah. thorough, interesting like appointment. There's like a smoking hole in the rock wall where he fires a disintegration ray at nothing. Yeah. Um, and also a charm person ray. That doesn't really matter. The wall is um, <clears throat> Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, okay, well, that's Gary's turn. Uh, we're back to the top with Morgan. What, what, would you, what else would you like to do? Um, I was thinking of Thunderstepping or... Or not Thunderstepping, uh, Dimension Dooring Ugna over there with me. <laughs> um, so we, I guess we yeah. can have a three-way three pinch at that point, then. You could... Um, can you dimension door others alone, or does it have to be you? I can spend a sorcery points to take a person with me. I believe. Well, you can automatically take one person with you. You should sorcery point take extra people with you. Mm. <clears throat> uh, do, 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 do. Yes, you can take one willing creature. Um, yeah, if you spend a sorcery point, you could you could take um, a Hollis and Lugna over there. I think I'll do that because they're, plants they're over the, in the middle of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll bring them into Melango. Um, here's another way we can give them a pinch and open up a little doorway with ivy growing up from the ground, arching over top, 
and Are bring the two of them with me. Um, so, so this, if I this... can, it's 500 meters. If I can see on the other side of that party that didn't get pushed, I want to go there. You, in fact, can see the side passage that Hollis just pointed out mm-hmm. as uh, a, a flanking point. Um, and basically, instantly, instead of going down the side corridor and coming around by however long that takes with uh, movement, you can teleport yourself, Ugna, and Hollis right to the, the ambush point that he just pointed out. Great. Um, um, and, um, and just, bam, they're all right there. Right behind all of these these goblins uh, and kobolds before they find their their footing. Yeah, I'll I'll make sure to take cover behind be, behind my meat shields and bonus action. If any of them are within, I believe sixty feet of the center of my storm sphere, I can light them. Yeah, up. Not, yep, now that you're on this side, you can you can shoot the, the nearest uh, ones to the storm sphere with a lightning bolt. So go ahead and make an attack roll. All right. Um, Copernicus, you're on deck, just so you know. Oh, that's only a two, unfortunately. Uh, oh, again, so close to the hoot growl. Of one. Um, and I'll I'll tell Ugna if you can get them in there, it'll be easier for me to shoot them. Copernicus. So, um, do I still have a clear shot down the tunnel if I was going to try and squeeze? The disintegration oh. ray, which went off, so I can I have a better chance of guessing which which eye has the disintegration ray. Uh, do I have a clean shot down the tunnel? Uh, let me see what the range on that disintegration ray is. Du, 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 du. Oh, we're all the same. Yes, it's a hundred and twenty foot range. Okay, and there's no allies that I might accidentally hit in that are like blocking the shot or anything at this point. They're there, but they're not blocking the shot. If you were to miss, it, there might be a chance of hitting someone else. Hmm. But you're not rolling with disadvantage anymore because you can see down there with the light that Ubna threw. Oh, can I, as an object interaction, take it at another uh, loaf light? Yep. <laughs> I'll I'll give it a a flick you, to you, get you, get you, the you, scum you, off of it. You're totally now. You're totally now. Um, uh, giving the um, uh, God, I can't remember the character's name now. But the the antagonist from Everything Ever All at Once with the, uh, <laughs> with the dildo attack. Yeah, that's the most just, nice thing gonna, someone has ever said to me. Thank you. <laughs> you're glowing, glowing dildos in both hands. Hell yeah! And now I want a bagel. <laughs> with everything on it. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Copernicus. So like, Perny will, will grab for the disintegration uh, ray. Okay. I, and then yell, suppressing fire! And try and make cover for, for people to come in and play. Roll me a d10 uh, plus five. Okay. And if you roll... Uh, enough to get to the disintegration gray, I will give it to you. So I got so eight on the you, die. So and I will do it. Um, yeah, you basically need to roll five or higher. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you, uh, you grab for, you're pretty sure you saw which of the one, like you saw the three he fired, you're pretty sure you saw which one was the disintegration ray and left the smoking, whatever it is, it left a smoking hole in the wall. You grab for that one, and you 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 basically jump up on top of Gary the Beholder, grab the one eye and hold it like a fire hose, <laughs> and go fire a hole and take your shot. Go ahead and roll an attack roll with your spell bonus. So that's a nat one. Oh, no. So I think I'm going to spend an inspiration. I would. Yeah. So it's not to disintegrate a teammate. Oh, that's that's nice. probably a good a good call. So let's see what you roll. It is not a net one. So that's a net three. <laughs> oh, no. well, that's better than that one. I think I at least don't disintegrate a teammate on that. So what's your total? Uh, that's a 12. A 12, okay. So that's enough to hit uh, something with a terrible armor class that's not in cover. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit the rocks that the goblins are taking cover behind. Okay. So you, you, you hit a, a, a bowler and zarch a hole in it, 
uh, and the various goblins go after. In my defense, I did yell suppressing fire, and the That's point true. of suppressing fire is not to hit, just to yeah. keep them pinned. To suppress. Yeah. I, that's what I meant to do. You've also eliminated some cover, so that's nice. Yeah. Ugma. It's oh. now Ugma and Hollis are next, so we are this is going to get we are interesting. We are in melee range now. Yeah, you're, they're, they're all, in fact, they're scattered from the previous uh, Thunderstrike. Um, that in fact, a, but the, the, a lot of them are now uh, uh, attempting to flee. It's they they go simultaneous to you, Ugna. Right. Um, so right now they're, uh, you know, some of them are taking on shooting arrows. Others are like ducking behind cover because now you're behind them, so they're no longer in cover for you. Uh, and others are breaking and running down the tunnel. Um, so you got your pick. It's a target-rich environment. Trying to get away. Um, at least a half a dozen. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Having another melee combatant here gives me some options. Uh, how's mm -hmm. Ugna feeling today? Evens or odds? Oh, she's feeling pretty smart. Okay. Uh, Ugna's gonna duck up from behind the wall, look up towards uh where Copernicus is, and be like, "All clear." to make sure there's no beams coming down. Oh, clear! All right, and then she will um, draw her net and toss it after the fleeing uh, goblins. Trying to get as big a group of them as I can. Now, this is, a, this is meant to be a single target net, but they are small, and you are large. So I will say you can get at least a couple of them in the net. Cool. Is a gladiator's net, right? Yeah, just what's for one target. Yeah, all right. But they're little. I will make an attack roll. That is a ten plus six will be sixteen. Excellent. That will hit. All right. Now I don't do any damage. No, nope, but... I rolled those same throws to see yeah. how entangled they are. Those are not good rolls. Those are single digit rolls. DC they are 14. both. So, they are both thoroughly entangled and fall to the ground. Cool. Um, uh, with a grunt. Uh, Hollis, I would like a perception check from you when that happens. Pico, pico, pico. Pico, 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 pico. You're too silly. 17. You distinctly heard a dwarven curse when those two individual goblins fell to the ground. One of the, they, they, they're oof. One of them says, uh, or a, a little utterance that sounds distinctly dwarvish to you. Not goblinish. Correct. Which I also understand. Actually, I speak goblin. Uh, oh, that's right. You also speak uh, yeah. dwarf. So, yeah, uh, if you roll me a perception, you could have uh, kind of heard that also, or caught that also. 13? Uh, you you caught it sounding weird, but you're not 100 percent sure why. Yeah. Um, no, that was one attack. You've got a second attack. What else are you doing? Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba, da. I've got my net out. It's thrown. I will have to use my other weapons. So I guess somebody's getting a hammer. Someone's the catching ones. the hammer. Yeah, but okay. it'll just be with one. Go for hand. it. Yep. Uh, 16 plus 10 will be 26. Cool, that's an amazing shot. Um, do you want to spend a maneuver point and send these guys flying? With that hit, I'm gonna let you. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a little tentative toe out here. To uh, what the hell are they calling it? I don't remember. D and D, not sixth edition. <laughs> D &D um, yeah, is that what one D and D or something? One D and D, yeah. D and D next, whatever. It's the new edition of D and D, but they're not calling the new edition because they don't want anyone to go. Oh, it's a new edition. We'll stop playing. Um, yep. Um, but uh, one of the things that they're bringing in is weapon masteries, uh, and one of the things they do with big weapons is uh, cleave attacks. With that roll, I'm going to let you hit a couple of them with one sweep. Um, so if you spend your maneuver. To send them flying, you can basically golf uh, two or three of them uh, with one sweep into the, the storm sphere. Let's do that. 
That'll be my push and attack. I'll, and I'll uh, roll some saving throws, and they all add fail. Add a die roll to damage. Uh, so that is five, and four is nine, plus another eight. Yeah, 17. we're going to take these guys out. Between you knocking them and then them being in the storm sphere and taking bludgeoning damage, um, this is going to basically knock them out one way or another. Two netted and um, two down. Yep. Hollis, you have new targets. Well, I'm still 60 to 80 feet away, right? No, you've been teleported with uh, Ugna and oh, um, into melee range. and Morgan. So Morgan Dimension Bird uh, for okay, three no, of I, you. I just I didn't yeah. realize I was uh, I was taking a trip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, if, if you didn't want to, you didn't have to because you can. It has to be a willing target. But but the invite was there, and Ugna charged through without hesitation. So seems safe. Um, I'm I'm going to do my job which is to draw fire uh 19 deception 23 on a nat 20 for performance shouting in undercommon which for hollis is a completely different accent nice you cowardly maggot munching ne'er the wells you face holiness the stone thruster shining vengeance of the deep Face me! Bang, bang, bang on the shield. <laughs> Excellent. Um, if you I want... I know I'm playing my paladin like a bard I to me. It. Does this guy have an agent? <laughs> you should really come on my stream sometime. Not that way. <laughs> I am happy to uh, let you uh, take an attack roll on one or more of them at the same time. All right. Since that's, that's largely just yelling. That, yeah, um, that was that was just yelling. Uh, uh, nineteen hit. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, seven damage. Uh, are you going to dump anything on that? Because you do have uh, various smite options. These are small folk. They don't need me. Yeah. Dumping things on them. I also I there's a like magical it. storm of bludgeoning happening, and no. And some of them might be dwarves or something. They certainly speak dwarven, but I don't know that. Um, and speaking of which, a number of arrows are once again variously ricocheting off of Hollis's Good. armor. That's my job. Once again, one arrow has a chance to, uh, well, does successfully, um, mainly because they're not rolling a disadvantage now because you're on this side of the sphere of the storm. Um, but one arrow will actually hit you as opposed to just ricochet off your armor. Silver um, barbs! So nice oh, having some You want to silver take. barbs it? <laughs> I silvery barbs it, and uh, that was so it, cool. You will actually get my advantage rather than Ubino this time. Nice. It okay. does not get past his other class. So Silver Barbs ensures that it just ricochets. So another volley of like five arrows go uh, uh, pinging and ringing off of the off of the armor. That was part of his bad rolls on my part, though, because uh, without the disadvantage, uh, they only need to roll a uh, 17 to actually get past your armor class. But uh, only one of them did. And did not with the reroll. Uh, so that takes us back down to Gary at the bottom of the the order, um, with no longer um, uh, having Morgan telling him what to do. He sort of like goes, "What? Get off! What are you doing? You're messing up my hair. I mean eyes." Um, and Gary's going to turn around and kind of shake himself to try and get you off uh, uh, of his of his head. Uh, so we're in the, uh, an athletics to hang on. Our old man, famously great at athletics. Yeah. So that's a four on the die, but the good news is I have a minus one. Ooh. So yeah, you kind of go tumbling off uh, and uh, 
land amongst the rocks, but actually you're floating above the ground as usual. Um, actually, no, sir, you don't. You go flying off and actually land with a thump in the rocks as you no. are in Gary's uh, eye beam. Oh, no. Uh, Gramp as, Grandpa's as hip! Grandpa's looking. hip! No, no. Yeah, but Grandpa, like, most of his clothes have been dissolved by the black pudding. I think he got hit by multiple arrows. He's like... No. <laughs> you take, like, one damage from falling amongst the rocks. All right. <laughs> Um, but today. the storm sphere uh, ceases to exist as Gary looks down the corridor in its direction. And it is back to the top of the initial order with Morgan. And uh, what do you want to do? There's a couple of uh, goblins tangled up and falling on the ground in a net. Um, but by this point, after many more volleys of arrows just ricocheting off of Hollis's armor uselessly, and after Ugna is golfing them around the place, uh, pretty much all of the rest of them are breaking and running. Um, I will... Um... I will Chaos Bolt one of them. Hope... Nah. Go for it. Yeah, because I'm trying to make it bounce and hit more people. I'm getting pretty low on spell slots. Um, I don't trust a entangle, so <clears throat> um, I'll do one of the farther ones away. Yep. That's trying to run away. That's a ten plus nine for spell attack bonus. Nineteen. Yep, that'll hit. Uh, and then that's two d eight. Two d eight, and if you roll the same number, you get a bounce. Okay. Uh, did not. That's a seven and four. Uh, so what do you want? Psychic damage or force damage? Uh, psychic. And they're just gonna see the disapproving frog face in their mind. Good. Uh, uh, and, yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll call over to Gary like, I know I'm cute, but could you give your eyes a gander at these fuckers? Uh, pointing to the, uh, the the kobolds, I think that is what they all are, right? Goblins and kobolds mixed. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I'll make a persuasion roll if you'll allow it. Oh, uh, so are you trying to persuade? Uh, Gary to come give these eyes a look. These guys a look. Um. Let me roll. Gary will start sort of like moseying up the corridor in that direction, and going, "What am I looking at?" These cobalt guys, they're being mean. <laughs> they're okay. also running away. At, at this yep. point, the noble thing to do would be to allow them to lick their wounds and regroup and consider the failed wisdom of their uh, except they choices to this point. Don't they have the things we're trying to retrieve that they stole from you? Uh, th this was this was an armed party. The, the I am certain that the thing we're looking for is further down the tunnel. Well, I mean, what we're really looking for is Sal, but I I guess the lost books too. Um. So at this point, uh, I will let you guys uh leave combat, um, because um, though none of them are fighting back at this point, they're fleeing. I um, like to, as combat ends, go and gather up the two that are in the net. Just kind of like yep. dangle them upside down. You may do so. Um, and as you do so, and you kind of shake it a little bit, uh, one of them, well, now you've got a real close-up look, you can see that one of them is um, a kobold with jet black eyes who's hissing and spitting at you uh, and snapping. Um, well, almost like rabid. Um, the other uh, at first appears to be a goblin, then you realize it's a goblin sized creature wearing a wooden carved goblin mask. And as you shake, the mask falls away, and there's a dwarf um, without black eyes, just with like normal, normal eyes. Um, he's got his beard. have gotten away with this if it hadn't been for us meddling kids. 
he's got his beard like all tucked up and tied around the back of his neck so it fits under the the goblin mask um and he's got um like weapon black around his eyes to to hide them behind the mask and just very obviously was wearing like a disguise um to try and fit in the mask has the jet black eyes that all of the other uh, goblins uh, and kobolds do but of course under the mask he's just a dwarf I will um, kind of blink at that and then say in uh, a dwarven huh you're not a goblin hey, Morgan's guys, gonna this? hold the bag like up for everybody to see Morgan's just gonna put her her hand on or I guess gonna reach up to Ugna's arm to to put him down and just with a very disappointed look at this door say damn not all skin focus kin folk I guess so as you're holding him up the kobold that's trapped in the net with him um as soon as his mask is gone is going to turn on him and start trying to like bite and scratch at him and he was really starts going can I, can I ball kobold on the head Punk. yes yeah, you yeah. thump. He just like hangs limp. And can you can you remind me? Did we make any progress in the Gen Con session about figuring out what uh, is going on with the black eyes? That's like a, a sign. So of, like... you tried to speak with Dead on one of the goblins. Yeah. Um, and you temporarily were possessed. Oh, that's uh, nice. And your eyes went black. Um, by a a, a shadowy spirit that reminded you of um of of your his of your past and this is a, the only only copernicus has that information right yeah the rest of you just were like okay something tried to possess him and he tried to speak with the dead and you were like yeah let's not try that again i'm sorry was that shukek za that it reminded me of or was it Sheki that it reminded me of i mean same uh, it reminded you of the powers of your patron, who is also Shecky's patron. So, so yes is the answer to that question. Gotcha. Okay. Um, can I do um, an arcana about the kobold to see if there's a way to like break whatever possessive or psychic link is like making it behave this way? You can make me. A history check with disadvantage. Oh no. Okay. Because this is not magical knowledge. This is remembering things that you've been trying not to remember actively for a long time. Mm. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, Hollis has the diplomat feat. Yes. Talk for a minute to grant persuasion versus insight oh. for a charm effect. Nice. So give me Lane, that if you're gonna make you talk role. for the full minute. I will. <laughs> boy, Capable. I say, boy, why? Why would you take such a handsome visage as yours and hide it behind that awful mask? Why would I'm you tiny. choose to, to look like something other than what you are? I, I say, I say, you got no reason to do that. We are, we are kin. You and I, we share distant blood. The, the blood of the stones runs through both you and me. You have no need to hide yourself from one such as me. Just open up to me. Perhaps tell me and my friends, what the hell are you doing here with these fucking goblins? Excellent. I expected a cotton picking in there somewhere. <laughs> Cotton picking goblin. I'm the ground person. I don't pick <laughs> cotton. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I don't even know what cotton is. Let's get that persuasion roll, and I will roll the insight. Um, it was a natural twenty. I'm so oh, sorry. My God. <laughs> my God. Oh no! Amazing. Um. You. Uh. As you speak to him, you realize. Um. That you recognize um some of his features and you take a guess that this guy is a member of house glacius and Knew you it. start no. you start to sort of like you know uh use that tactic with your charm of being like you know the real great houses you know none of this um and and at this point i'll remind you 
uh, that you actually know. Um, hang on a second here. Oh yeah, all my file. notes from the Gen Con game were on a piece of paper that not I a problem don't think came home with me. No worries. There was like the rich dwarves. No, they seem shady. Lassius is the merchant house, right? Yes. Right. Um, so you uh would one who comes from as much money as i must assume you come from be cavorting about with with goblins but you were also aware that um that certain unrest that you haven't really fully disclosed to the party um involves um members of house glacius uh Maybe uh, moving against uh, House Phaneris, which is, of course, the house of King Lofar Embergrim. So you can you can play that up about how, like, you know, Glacius is a real great house, not like some houses, like you know, Phaneris. Oh, and okay. So, too long. You can you can you can dig that charm in, um, okay. and make him think that he's on your that you're on his side. Um. And with that Matt 20, uh, I'm just going to say, yeah, he, he sighs with relief um, and, and, uh, and says, oh, I thank goodness uh, one of us, and this is all in Dwarven, of course, um, thank goodness one of us has infiltrated this band of misfits. Uh, you will, of course... Uh, mislead them in their little investigation. Uh, they, they, we, we cannot have them recover uh, uh, the the records um, that were taken. Um, you will, of course, help uh, uh, help keep keep them from. He, he's talking as though there's no way that this like Uga yeah, and Morgan yeah. are right there, then, but he's talking in Dwarvish, and he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. stupid like, non-dwarves. Why can't we have the records? What is the problem with that? <laughs> In like perfect <laughs> Sir, sir. I say, actually, it's important for you to recognize I'm, that uh, there ha there has been some there has been some compartmentalization within our organization, and you and I may be party to different parts of the same story. If you would fill me in as to the direction of the things from which I'm supposed to be keeping this party of adventurers, it would be much easier for me to oblige you in your desire to keep them from it. Uh, well, of course. Um, I, I'm going to say, by the way, with the net 20 that uh, Howard rolled for Hollis, as Ugo starts to say in Dwarvish, why would little, I? Little there's like ears. a little mild hand goes boop. Like just cartoon style, both right yeah. in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I did not um, realize I had that ability. I'm gonna have to make note of that for future reference. I, I Mar start Morgan's just gonna just stop. Morgan's just gonna like swat his hand away from Ugna's mouth and pull Ugna closer to her with a scowl. <laughs> like um, she understands she understands cool. that Ugna needs to be quiet, but like don't touch her like yep. that. <laughs> and then also who's gonna, gonna like press the digitation, some cleaning of the blood off of her to distract her. I also want to point out that with um, uh, Hollis can uh, could also be doing an emissary of peace on this with Channel Divinity with an extra plus five on top of his nat twenty. Um, but um, you are assuming that I have spent more time reading this character sheet than I actually have. Uh, it's been a minute. It's been a minute since Gen Con. So yeah, he starts. He starts. Um, he conspiratorially, uh, and you can you you can kind of direct your friends here. You can like have oh yeah, Morgan is taking Uda aside, and you can conspiratorially you know bring him over here. Yeah yeah yeah, you go, you, my friend. You build fill me in. Um, so uh, <laughs> all, he all tells needs you to do is go. Ugna, look dumb, and then Ugna is just sort of again slack jawed like. <laughs> I clearly don't know what's going on. That's my natural state. But I am listening. Um, he says, uh, well, the, it's the, 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 
the Morins, that sorcerer and his and his minions, they wanted the, the he, they wanted the records, they wanted the books, um, and they wanted that that uh, strange dwarf who came from the uh, from Karsh. Um, but uh, they, of course, um, you know, through our our allies, our mutual allies, of course, uh, they've uh, been supporting our our insurrection. Uh, in, soon, as as more of the lost have been um, making their raids, the um, and the the goblins and their other allies, the. Uh, Position of uh, Embergrim and his and his dusty old uh, court uh, grows weaker by the day, um, uh, and so the importance of this particular mission required that we we get them into the the library, and and so that's why our our party was uh, embedded with them and and led them. Uh, led them past our defenses. On, you, you appear to have fallen on one another at some point. Uh, what, what, what did you run afoul of? What, what has gone wrong? Well, that damned beholder. We, um... Of course. I believe his name is Gary, and... Well, and he's, he's coming this way. We better, we better do something quickly. Attorney will, I've, got uh... him, I've got him charmed for the time being. Tarny will throw an arm over Gary's shoulder, which he doesn't have because he's a floating ball of flesh and ice stones. Floating ball. Uh, and kind of like taking it on the other side and like, um, I apologize for the improvised uh, eye examination. Um, I didn't explain what I was doing. We can we can finish that up over here if you have a moment. I promise it'll be much more. Now, the, the Shadow Smith fellow who, uh, yes. who you, have, you have abducted. Um, my cell, my compartment of this grand grand confederacy of ours uh, uh needs needs his presence he's got some information that that we would uh we stand in dire need of will you tell me which way he is so that we can collect him well he's being delivered to the the sorcerer as per our agreement um he'll be taken to the um uh he'll be taken to the uh the lower spire uh, uh which you got a, a shudder of cold when you hear that because the lower spire is the sort of um, mysterious name for the the city of the um, uh, the lost uh, the lost uh, house of dwarves, the Derogar. Um and uh, the the lower spire is what they call uh, their city, supposedly carved into a massive stalactite. Um, so it's kind of like a, uh, an, an anti-dwarf city. Instead of being in a mountain above ground, it's in a giant stalactite below ground. Um, uh, it's, and um, it'll be taken to the emissaries of the, of the, the Morland Sorcerer. And then they will fulfill the rest of the bargain, and we will get the magical arms we need to uh, fully unseat the Embergrims and uh, bring the true king under the mountain to power. Gives you a little elbow, eh? eh? Outstanding. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much for your, for your assistance in, in this matter. Um, at which point I think I produce, because I'm dwarven law enforcement, a really, really effective set of manacles. Amazing. Yep. Clapping Cuffs and hand mithril, mithril handcuffs. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, you, you have to tell me if you're a cop. Uh, I would also like to back up this intimidation uh, that. Uh, he says, I'm a sovereign dwarf. You, you don't have, have any authority. Back up Howard's in, or, uh, uh, Hollis's intimidation uh, by leaning over with my very very scowly orcish face and say in very perfect dwarven um i now name you enemy of house shattersmith may your hammers break and your beards fall out nice <laughs> Woo oh my goodness um yeah that's gonna break 
Yeah, the, he's no longer oh, charmed, yeah. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, he sort of uh, um, uh, shouts a warning in Goblin um, to basically no one because by this point, yeah. all of the goblins are gone except the unconscious kobold you knocked over the head. Um, well, next, you've got a bunch of fallen goblins. You've got uh, a prisoner uh, dwarf. You've got a prisoner. Um, you also find, by the way, um, as you check the fallen here, um, a couple of the other goblins that you have taken out uh, are also masked dwarves. Uh, and when you reveal, you find that they are, in fact, uh, dead dwarves. One of them, Hollis, you recognize um, as uh, a... a um, a warrior of some standing in House Glacius, uh, and you would guess he was probably the leader of this little uh, little group. Any sort of a signet, like a ring or a locket or a sigil on his armor or something? Um, yeah, probably. They're they're too they're too arrogant about this to have been worried about you know. You know, making sure no one could identify them. They sort of like, if our, if if their masks were taken off, they were pretty much expecting to be in trouble. Um, one of the interesting things is that the wooden mask um, that he was wearing, they were wearing. You swear that before you took these goblins out, they were full on flesh goblin, like their mouths were moving, like they were just masks. wearing a mask. Yeah. Um, and you realize that the one that you grabbed with the net was being looked at by Gary when you pulled oh, his mask off. Gotcha. Yeah. The dead ones, though, just look, look like they have normal masks on because they're dead. Um, these basically Ooh. act like the... Um, Morgan's uh, going to put one on. The sky self cantrip. <laughs> Morgan's going to press an agitation that goo off one of and will put one on. To perform a, a, an act of... Of, of uh, curiosity? <laughs> um, Reckless. Yeah, that's what it's called. What I was yeah. looking for. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're really good at that. Um, so, Raven, uh, you put the mask on. Morgan turns into a goblin with black eyes from everybody else's perspective. Oh! So, so, you put the mask on your face, and you're a goblin. Like, your, le- your, your century legs look like goblin legs now. Mm. Um, as, as, as though you, were, you had the disguise self uh, spell going um, but also I would like a wisdom save from you I was, I was thought thinking, so, thought so I was, I was going to say I would require a wisdom save to not do this <laughs> not the mask already represents a failed wisdom save <laughs> um, alright wisdom's plus three oh that's a 12, 15. Um, that's not going to cut it. Okay, so uh, you hear a voice uh, whispering in your ear in a language you don't understand. Mm-hmm. Um, and you... Uh, how many spell slots you got left? Um, that's a bit unclear to me. I did spend a Dimension Door and a Storm Sphere in yep. this combat. Uh, but but my, really, I don't think you used much in the way of spells last game since your rest. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you used any spells last game. I'm just skimming um, through the I look. I believe I entangled. I, um, I yes, chaos you, bolted. You chaos bolted this time. Entangled um, I, your I chaos line. bolted the goo at I least once. Like, yeah, so there's two. Yeah, I forgot about you. You did do some spell casting against yeah. that. You lightning bolted too, didn't you? Yes. So you are down one, two, three. Yeah, so you're down all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I, w- so I just want to say, depending on how right now, smart this compulsion is, um, it would be better to use a um, a charm person or a um, uh, what is it called? Oh, buddy, uh, deception that I'm not compulsed. Depending on how well the compulsion works. 
Um, just to be the, the compulsion dark one can't, <laughs> no, the, the, the compulsion can't be like too um, complicated there. So what instead it's going to do is it's going to have you um, chase after your new compatriots okay. with a thunderstep. That makes um, so much sense. <laughs> so, uh, Hollis and Ugma need to roll me a saving throw. And your constitution saving throw. I think we're both good at those. Let's see yep. if we roll well. And I am going to roll Ooh. 3d10. Uh, wild magic surge? 24. I'll roll for it. Yeah. Uh, 24 is going to succeed, succeed for sure. Yeah, it's 17. So weird. You also have an additional bonus from being near Hollis. Right. Um, yeah, so Hollis, you were in the Constitution save. Don't forget to add your extra. Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out where the extra is. Sorry. It is. Or protection under power and class plus three. So you're adding a, you've got a plus five total saving throw here. Okay, 19. You succeed also. So you each only take 12 damage instead of 24. Um, under damage from the explosion as um, as Morgan, uh, having turned into a goblin, grabs one shoulder of the dwarven prisoner and both Morgan and the prisoner disappear with an explosion of thunder damage. Um, as you thunder step up the tunnel well, that is going to make it much more difficult to bring him to justice. It's true. Um, and Morgan, you, you and your ally are, are going to try and escape. Uh, All now. right. So you, you Ugna, are now up if I may for a moment, fight. Ugna, um, you may have already, already ascertained this for yourself. Don't put on any of the masks. Oh, good. I was going to do that next because that looked really cool. <laughs> Do I need to roll a persuasion check on that just to be sure? No. Okay. It fails those readily. I, um, I, kick, I kick the mask that I was about to pick up behind me. <laughs> <laughs> like, scuff it with a like, uh, mask? I wasn't going to put on a mask. What are you talking about? See, I knew you. I knew you were clever. I knew you were clever. I may have, I you know. I don't think anyone's ever called me that before. Thanks. <laughs> I might have uh, impulsive on my sheet somewhere, maybe, maybe. just a little. Maybe. Um, so Morgan is now fleeing up the corridor and is a goblin along with the dwarf, uh, who's really awkwardly because he's still wearing mithril manacles, but uh, uh, his his legs are still free, so he's still he's still running. He's no longer in the net because he was teleported. Um, uh, Copernicus, you can be there by now. Um, uh, so what I what do I want to do? We should, uh, we should probably stop them, right? Right. Let's try and get a fishing rod cast and like catch the manacles. Um, let's see if I can catch that guy with a. I guess it, a stunning chill touch, but I'm trying. I'm trying, not trying, to to trying to drag him towards you. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to catch him and and, and pull him back. Because you do have the. Um, Oh, yeah, I can move him 10 feet if I... Yeah, the, the repelling or grasping, sorry, the grasping, so you can pull. And in fact, you can do a restraining with the grasping. Yeah, um, I will attempt that. Okay. Just, should, we, should we do initiative actually here? Um, I'm basically letting each of the... Like, they're, they're, all they're doing is fleeing. Yeah. Um, and um, Morgan's control... Uh, under this mask is limited. So Morgan's not going to be doing a lot of different things. But um, so I, I don't think the full initiative role is really necessary because all they're basically doing is fleeing and I'll, I'll have Morgan do an occasional spell. Um, so all three of you can kind of act at the same time. Uh, so go ahead and make your, your cast here. So you, you, you're pulling out the knife Cutting yourself and doing the blood magic yeah. to power up your chill touch. Yes, that is correct. So right. take five damage and you're doing your grasping touch. Make yeah. your attack roll. 
23 to hit. Not a hit. Excellent. So the, the ghostly, bone-like uh, hand uh, with the hook uh, fingers appears on the shoots out and actually hooks and grasps the shoulder uh, of this dwarf. Uh, and you can uh, either yank him backwards towards you uh, 10 feet, or you can attempt to uh, consider this a grapple and have uh, do a restrain, which you would have to do a strength check to break out of. I'll try and do a grapple. Okay, so what you're going to do here is roll your um, uh, your spell attack bonus, okay. and he's going to roll against it with a strength check to try and break out of the grapple. Uh, if I, if a thirteen's not going to beat him, let me know. Cause I'm it gonna... will, because I rolled a five, and his bonus Yay. is not that high. Yay! Um, you successfully grab him. Uh, roll your damage, because he still takes the chill touch damage. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to make this subdual if I can choose to do so. Uh, ten. Not really, because it's necrotic, right? Yeah, it's like friendly necrotic. <laughs> that warm and but ten damage doesn't doesn't take him out. Um, so he stops short as they're fleeing. Uh, Hollis and Ubna, what do you guys want to do? So they teleported like maybe fifty feet up the tunnel because that was probably about as far as um, Mort Morgan could see. So that's about how far away. But then they stopped short, or at least the dwarf did, with this chill touch. This skeletal spectral hand has grabbed him and not let him go. Uh, should we stop her? At risk of sounding cliche, our prey, the game as it were, is now afoot. Expeditious pursuit would be apropos. And I begin running. Okay, gotcha. Um, and I, I, I I'm not I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me. Let I, me I'm not roll. sure. I'm not sure how fast Ugna is, but uh, uh, I've, I've done the math. The dwarf, even with full armor, only weighs about 200 pounds. Yeah. So. I uh, I actually understood those words. I think because you said them in dwarven. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, you you have your boots of climbing and leaping. You could I grab think. Hollis and bolt. Yeah. So I you you run hell for leather up the uh, uh, hallway, and then you hear very a thump. dangerous cross short distances. You uh, you hear a thump behind you, um, or beside you, in fact, as Ugna takes like a step, a very long <laughs> step, but goes. Uh, I know a lot of people don't really like to be picked up. Would you be okay with me lifting you and carrying you? Do it, please. Right. As I like, you're running full out, and I'm like, just walking. <laughs> I'm like, I'm all right, and I will heft you up onto my shoulders, and then Permission. whatever bolt down the uh, uh, hallway. No uh, nope athletics check. No athletics check to see how much faster than your normal movement you can go with this dash action. Only an eight, but with a plus eleven athletics, it's a tw uh, nineteen. Yeah, that's still pretty dang good. Yeah. Um, so you scoop up Horace, and you can, like, close the distance completely um, and overtake. Uh, so Morgan was only able to, after the teleport, uh, to take, like, a normal bit of movement. Um, and you are able to do more than double your normal movement and basically close that distance. Um, which means uh, Horace can now take a turn from basically practically right there, like caught up with um, Morgan and the uh, the dwarf. What would you like to do? Me? Yep. Attack? Um... No, not you. Oh, sorry. Hollis. Hollis. It's Hollis I need to hear from. We've completely ditched Gary and Grandpa. Yep. We're still way back there. No, Grandpa's with him on line of sight because he's he threw that uh, that chill touch yeah, at the true. dwarf. He helped. 
Well, I, I think I gotta take the mace and swing at the face and uh, burn a spell slot to smite some evil. At, at Morgan? Or at the you gotta dwarf? get the mask off, right? Yeah. Yep. So you're attempting to knock the mask off, basically. I mean, I realize Morgan now looks like, like a, a goblin. Goblin. Yeah. It, it, I'm going to do a quick arcana check. It's not my strong suit. Uh, dirty 20. Well, that's pretty good, though. Does smiting evil to the face seem like something that would help? <laughs> evil is weakest in the face. I've that's heard. true. I've heard that. So I guess I will say with that really good roll, I'm going to say um, you would know probably three options to try. Okay. Um, one would be to physically try and knock the mask off, um, which you, you know an attack roll could probably do. Oh, excellent. <laughs> well done, Morgan. Amazing. Nice. You're a little bacoblin. It's a me, bacoblin. Bacoblin. Bacoblin Um, A second option would be that you do have the whole person spell, uh, so you could attempt to um, at least stop her. Restraint. Uh, yeah, so. restrain her so that you can then do whatever else you got. Like, just literally pull off the mask. Uh, and then the third option, uh, as a uh, paladin, um, you might have a spell, and I'm just double-checking if there is a paladin spell that can kind of stop an influence on someone that you would have access to. You have level two spells. I guess Calm Emotions would be the most... Yeah, I think the other options probably make more sense. The hold person or physically trying to knock the mask off. Let's cast hold person. Seems good. Okay. Because I'm pretty sure Ugna is a better mask puncher than I am. I can probably... Let's see if I have any disarm. I have a disarming attack, which I could use on her face. Yeah. Okay, well, this is a simultaneous then, so let's go for it. So, uh, I'm going to make a wisdom saving throw. Peter, use your brain. I can't say anything right now, but Peter, I know you've got, you you have in you the information needed for this to be easier. I'm just going to say that. Oh, that's right. Just make the mask look in the bucket. <laughs> oh, uh, no. I'm going to save the throw for Morgan. Morgan, and you lose them saving throw. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Um. Oh my God! Wait, is this charm? No. Okay. It's a whole person. No, no, no. The the, mask. the effect. Uh, the mask because I do. No, have... it's it's more of a possession. I know. Okay. I know you have a fair like okay. resistance to charm, but that's not what right. this is. All right. That's why you're not just acting of your own volition. You're doing a limited yeah. set of uh, actions. I got a twelve. Um. That's not going to... Nope. If you no. bonus, that won't be enough to make it. Okay. Um, so that will be yeah. a successful hold person. So you are paralyzed temporarily. Um, Ugna, go ahead and make your disarming attack with uh, advantage because of that. Okay, I am not going to use a weapon. I'm going to use my fist. Yep. <laughs> Uh, this is the scene from uh, Avengers where Thor just rips off uh, Iron Man's face. I, uh, I'm i going to spend an inspiration to not crit fail. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> very wise to me. That's, I like uh, when we were holding Pico makes it look like you were going to roll him. Yes. That he's the die. He wants me to roll him. He is in maximum crazy mode right now. and uh, he's Just because he's been in... He's been all cooped up and he's a sad little guy now. Yeah. yeah. He's got to get all out his crazies. Okay, that's much better. Um, So 12 plus my hit bonus, which I believe is a 6. Yep. Would be 18. Hi. Uh, I need another saving throw for Morgan, please. Uh, this time it's a strength saving throw. 
Oh God! <clears throat> All right. Yeah, we're not good at this. Uh, this is only a my only a plus one. Okay, not too bad. So sweet. Seven, yeah. eight. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. You just like slap the mask right off. Um. Uh, Peter. Yeah. The uh, dwarf is trying to break free. Uh, please roll another. Uh, 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 spell attack. That is a twenty-eight. Uh, is I'm not even close to that remotely. Um, in fact, you rolled so well. Uh, he like tries to pull away, and you like hold him back, and then sort of turn him slightly and let go, and he like just throws himself head first into a rock wall and knocks himself unconscious. Oh, no. <laughs> um. Is there any chance that he is the kind of uh, hurt where I can do spare the dying on him? Uh, he's not even. He's fine. He's taking ten damage. Okay. I really need. Uh, I really need those spare the dying hit points for my. Um, uh, my um, I mean, you could cast it on. You could cast spare the dying on any of these. Like you, you're in a, an area filled with dying goblins. You know what? I will. Uh, I'll. I'll do. A, I'll. I'll take. You get, you get your you get your spare the dying off of one of these random. Yeah. I also don't want everyone to just randomly bleed out at the bottom of the cavern, especially yep. if they're possessed. So I'll 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 do a round of spare the dying here, but I'm gonna, I'm going to restrain our guy okay. again. Okay, Morgan. Yep. Uh, Morgan goes and you're back to normal. Do I remember what happened? Uh, yeah, you heard this this hideous voice whispering words that don't mean anything to you in your head, and it made you like see oh. through a mist and do things that, you know, you just remember trying to get away from enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Morgan's gonna wiggle her head and ah, get rid of that. Take the goblin mask off. Nice. Um, and, uh, go, God, I guess we... Right? Oh, you know what? I think this is about the time that we all exchange our safe words. Oh yeah, sorry for stopping you. I just I figured the mask was bad. No, 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 no. I just think like overall, and in case possession, and she gives like just to deflect from her own feeling of sourness at being possessed is gonna be like possession emphasis on an eye look over at Perny, just in case something like that happens again. You know, we have uh, a way to uh, check in. It's an, enough know. of an occupational hazard that I, I think that that's, that is warranted. So what's everybody's safe word? I mean, is this okay. the word that you say to say that you are safe and you are yourself? Or is this the word that you... Because we won't be able to say it if we're possessed. So how do we want to do this? How, how are we how are we organizing this? Hmm. Um, I guess it should be a phrase that you, like, call and repeat. Um, and then Morgan's gonna go to text <laughs> on her crystal <laughs> to Perny. Um, uh, call, call and response, Skoden and Studis. Amazing. Uh, so you have to respond when, um, that way, either through our Perny net or, um, aloud or written to, to communicate that you are not possessed. Uh, and and we'll we'll say that and and before you send this to Ugna, tell her not to say it aloud. Um, okay. <laughs> right now. Um, if somebody fails okay. to say the answer word, then we know that something's up. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Howard, did you want? To, I know you don't have the notes from Gen Con uh, on you. Uh, do you want to explain to any of the party sort of what the whole deal is with this dwarf family? How much do you want them to know? If I if I may if I may briefly catch you up on uh, matters of dwarven politics, uh, it it would appear that House Glacius is actively engaged in an attempt to overthrow. The current rightful king of the uh, of the dwarves, uh, my sworn master. Understand, I, I am sworn to law, 
not to an individual. But this individual is by law the king. And so that is where my loyalties currently and of necessity uh, must lie. Uh, this fellow is from House Glacius and the deceased dwarves, uh, once we got the masks off, uh, they also appeared to be from House Glacius. And so uh, it behooves me as an agent of the lawful king to present as much of this evidence to him and to the, the powers that be so that they might prepare themselves for whatever might be coming. Yeah, but what's, what's Although the, in that vein, problem? whatever might be coming is probably coming from the direction we're headed. What's the so, lower spiral, Hollis? I've never heard of that place before, but if they're taking cell there... Oh, gotta... that. Uh, you, you, know, you know what a stalagmite is? Those things that hang down from the top? Like that. Over I there. thought it was... Stalag I thought that was the ones that hang from stalagmite. the bottom. That are, like, poke up from the bottom, don't they? Oh, no, that's a stalagmite. It's got a G in it. What? Stalactites yeah. from the ceiling. No, no, no. Stalagmites from... Ground. Oh no! You want you you you're right about that. Uh, it's the the stalactite. Hang on tight. The stalagmites. I could never uh, get them together, the but then he told yeah, the, the, the lower lower. I always fire. I always mix the, mix these up. So what's the rule? How do you tell G, which ones are up and down? It's got a G in ceiling. it. It comes from the ground. Which one has a G in it? Stalagmite. Oh, okay, that one. All right, cool. Oh, Copernicus, you were rolling the uh, history check with disadvantage, though. Oh, we don't need to go back to that. <laughs> we can forget that ever happened. The Lower Skeen is a city inside a city-sized stalactite. Or so I'm told. Personally, as, as the son of stonemasons of no small, no small regard, I find that difficult to believe. So not like the one the that... Best place oh, to do. So, Okay. Hmm. Um, are you mentioning that the 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 lost? Oh, yeah. It's a city of the it's city of the Dwerga, the uh, the lost lost tribe of dwarves who uh, almost uniformly failed to pass a detect good check. Oh, it seems uh bad. I do not mean to strip them by agents of their agency but purely by virtue of race, but for cultural reasons, they are not agents of wheel. Wait, wheel's good? W-E-A-L? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah, so, okay. And that's where Sal is now, presumably. Big hanging city of bad, angry dwarves. Yes. Okay. That seems bad. I suppose or, I could have led with that. Morgan's gonna do an. Throw your king for reasons. Mor Morgan's gonna do an arcana check on the mask that she stole. She yep. picks it up and is examining it with arcana. That's a two. I'm. Um, it, 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 it's total magic. I wonder, if, I wonder if we could use this on somebody. We shall stuff it into the bag of holding on a little, little uh, uh, cabinier, uh, ca carabiner. Sorry. Um. Have utility in the future. The other thing that was mentioned to you, Hollis, was this uh, sorcerer that was described as uh, a Malwin sorcerer. I'm sorry, I, I assumed that everybody would just assume that there's some sort of evil, magical, magic-wielding mm -hmm. person behind all of this. Yeah, but there's so many of them. Like, hey. It's good to know which one. What's, what's a Moomin, though? You said he was like a Moomin sorcerer. I didn't really catch that part. Um, some and about magic users can be very harmful. So, uh, Copernicus, yeah. where are you going to make that roll from before? Because if, if you don't have to. So I did. Okay. And it wasn't good. It was a nat, it was a nat one on the second roll. And the first roll okay. was, was not amazing. Then you weren't able to dredge up those memories. Um, but 
I would now like a history roll without disadvantage as soon as you hear this name. That's a 21. Nice. Okay. So. So the, the, the name that you heard um, was, uh, you realize is Melon. That, uh, that they, as they all sort of stumble around, Malin, Malwin, Marwin. Um, and you have heard of House Marin. Uh, so it's M A R R Y N. Um, the Merins are one of the noble houses of the north. Um, they had considerable house uh, or power and influence. Um, they're one of the old houses. There's only a few old houses of the north. Um, and you, of course, you know several of the old houses because that, like the Langarians, for example, the Strax. Uh, the Boltries are not an old house. They were a lesser house that has recently risen to power. And you now know why because of uh, certain uh, selling of Tromlin to uh, our firstborn sons to the Fae. Um, no, the old houses of the north are the Blackmonts, who you guys have encountered. Um, the uh, uh, Tyrathians, who you've encountered. Langarians, the Strax, and the Marins. The Marins, uh, the party has not encountered. They are uh, uh, Easterns, uh, Easterlings, people from the deserts of the east, who had a lot of power before the rise of the Chaga Khan. Uh, back in the day. Uh, and they had lost a lot of their power, but Baron Nicholas Merrin is someone you personally are fairly familiar with, Copernicus, because Baron uh, Nicholas holds power in the city of Morwendel. And I don't know if you remember much about the city of Morwendel because it's been a long time. My, my ancestral family home is there. That is where your ancestral family home is, yes. The city of uh, so cool, cool, cool. a a Marin sorcerer uh, sounds like a sorcerer that has something to do with the the city of Morwendel, and this might be a good time for Alina to pull a map I up. I am looking for that. Give me half a second. Um, uh, meanwhile, I'll just sort of Northlands around Mudhollow. No, the I don't think that one shows Morwendel. No, it doesn't. Okay. It's the original Northlands of Karsh map. map. Yeah. The broader Northlands of Karsh. Um, there we go. So while you're doing that, um, uh, so as Paulus is explaining this to you, uh, um, also with that history check, you um, you know a little bit about these names of the, the houses of the dwarves. There were originally seven uh, great houses of the dwarves. Um, the uh, the seven houses of the dwarves, of course, are Phaneris, Aphanus, uh, Porphyrus, Pyroclasius, Pegmatus, and Glacius. Um, which and that that's a deep cut uh, geology joke because uh, you got a scientist as your DM. Um, those are the six types of igne uh, igneous rock, um, and then the seventh. Uh, of the houses of the dwarves are the lost. They're the house that was lost to the worship of evil gods and demons um, in the Underdark uh, who became known as the Durgar. Um, uh, house uh, Phaneris is the house of King Lothar Embergrim, who is the ruler of Rockspire. Glacius are the richest house um, of merchants and uh, from what Hollis is telling you they seem to be trying to pull off some sort of coup uh, to come to power. Um, now that map is up. Yep. Yes, it is. Um, I'm going to need you to drag the map a little bit to the side so we can see more of the right-hand side. Um, or you can or zoom in. Actually, you can see more window. It's just small. I think if people want to um, full screen the stream, they'll be able to see there, uh, more Wendell. More Wendell, which um, 
you'll notice uh, is on Lake Morwindle, um, on the edge of the Iron Peak Mountains, um, which maybe gives you a direction. So to recap, you uh, from questioning this dwarf, uh, you believe that the goblins with the black eyes are taking the uh, taking Sal to the Durgar, and they have got some kind of deal with a sorcerer from Morwindle. Yeah. Um, although I'm not sure how much of that you're uh, revealing, Peter. I'm assuming I'll pass all of it, I'll, but I'll share all of it. Yeah. Oh, buddy, stop fighting. Uh, are you are you sharing the whole thing about? Um, buddy. No. Uh, Uh, are you sharing the whole thing about your family uh, history being there? Mm, or are you mention, saving that tidbit? I won't mention that. It's not relevant to the current situation, not hiding it, just not relevant to this exact uh, juncture. Okay. There's evil sorcerer of um, Windle and evil city of Dwarves. So what's next? Well, I think we do need to make our way to um, that that spire. Um, uh, we we I know yeah, that we Uno won't leave without us being able to recover Sal. Yeah, we um, gotta get Sal back. Especially, like, if these guys are real evil. Who knows what they're gonna do to him? Um, now, Tromlin normally helps us with our disguises. Is Are any of us proficient with disguises if we were to try to um, infiltrate this city? I can look like whatever you need me to look like, provided all you need is for me to look like me. Hmm. Well... <laughs> That may not do in this particular circumstance. Um, all right, well, I think then we will do... Uh, hmm. So there's no way to put the masks on and be, to be sure that we are going to get a result but we are in control of ourselves. Is that yeah, that seems like correct? a bad idea. Okay. All right. Um, Can we be invisible? We did that before. We could just be invisible. That's a good point. Um, so how many are, how many are we right now? I assume we've lost Fetid and Ollie in the scuffle. I'll call Fetid up the side corridors and I assume we don't get a response. Not, not immediately, Fetid. no. Hey, hey buddy, we're, we're leaving. He's very good at passing out Trace. Yeah. Um, okay, so then at fourth level... Uh, no, sorry. So at, at third level, I can hit two. At fourth level, I can hit three. I can do... Um... Excuse me, friend. Do not bite that. It'll stop the stream. I can disguise sorry. myself. Um... Yeah, you have disguise self. I think I can juice it with blood for an extra target as well. I like can hit four people. I can hit four people with invisibility, which I think is all of us, correct? Uh, in fact, yes, right now there are four of you, unless you count Gary, who right now is kind of just hanging around in the back, kind of looking at you all, wondering what, what what's this all about. Gary, I think we, um, a friend of ours was taken. We have to track him down. I think our path leads us away. Yeah. So, um, oh, uh, before we're you going go, though, to head on. Just a sec. Uh, Hollis, do you, how good are your people at, like, making people not stone? It, it has a friend of yours been actually literally petrified? I mean, Troublin was once, but he got better. I was just thinking, like, you don't have time to take these criminals, and I'll point at the dwarves that were goblins back in for questioning, but, like, if they're rock, no one can hurt them. And they're not going anywhere. True. So if you have a way to and enforced stillness by way of petrification. I just gestured I, towards Gary. Oh. I, I, have ne I, I, I have never had the, the, the privilege of working closely I, with, with a, a beholder in, in this manner. Um, I'm Gary. Gary's a great guy. We, we, we met, we met, Gary. Gary, call us, call us Gary. 
Um, you know, I really like the dungeons you have down here. I mean, I'm looking for a place right now. Um, maybe we could come to some kind of arrangement. I'm never I, late I, with my rent. I, I strongly suspect that we, we could come to some sort of an arrangement. I'm curious if you could do me a favor, however. Uh, could you... If we netted up, or g gathered up some of these uh, dwarven ne'er do wells, um, Morgan is already you... arranging them in questionable positions. <laughs> could, could, could you, could you perhaps deposit them at the mouth of the the the, the entrance that, that led into the library? Oh sure, I could do that. Thank thank you, and and uh, but before before you do, I, I'd like to leave a note. And Hollis is now very quickly going to write in his best. Um, I'm filling out this report as quickly as, as quickly as I can, checking all the boxes. Um, uh, you're, with you're a full second on... note, a second note, with my seal on it that says, you know, eyes of the king only. Uh, These guys is criminals. <laughs> no, but also that what he just heard yeah. from the. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you even pull and pull out like you've got like um, you pull out a deputy star, and stick it on Gary, nice. and say, oh, I, I do hope that skin doesn't hurt your eye. That, that was careless of me. I'm so sorry." Yeah, um, you can like pin it to a scale, uh, on his hide. Yeah, uh, yeah, just so you're like, if any dwarves like go, oh no, a beholder's attacking our city. You can show the. He seems to have been deputized. <laughs> Yep. Morgan is rummaging oh, yeah. through her bag and pulling out, uh, throwing out like a nurse's cap, obviously like stripper style, and then like a bright, hot pink, glittery cowboy hat, oh, and yes. places it with a little elastic around a couple of the eye stalks on the top of Gary's head. <laughs> That's perfect, Gary. Per the uh, the uh, posse dwarfatatus uh, legislation. Enactment, whatever my legalese is too rusty to improvise. Um, uh, I have I've deputized you to carry these folks upstairs, and then you can be on your merry way. You uh, you need not assume any other duties, and uh, we should exchange cards so I can perhaps arrange uh, suitable housing for you. Um, he's got like a beholder card. I don't know. So it's like a card that just has his monster stats on it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> just a stat block. Yep, yeah, it's the monster stat block. Um, sure, yeah, and we're like telekinesis, I, and another with this like tied up bundle of uh, prisoners uh, and go floating up the, the corridor. Well, uh, yeah, one of them is a prisoner, the rest of them are corpses. Uh, you've got um, a bunch of them at least the dying. You've yeah. got whoever was spared the dying by Peter, and you've got the kobold that was knocked unconscious and not right. actually uh, harmed, um, as well as your manacled dwarf. The other dwarves are dead. Yeah. Um, okay, they are all being sent up. Are they, being, are they being sent up petrified? Because I'd just like to see that. The whole knowledge metagaming thing here. Uh, Lane, whatever serves the story best. Did the yep. note get intercepted? Did I write things on the right paper? I have oh, it's no all good. idea. That's it's all your good. job. Um, um, yeah, I'm happy to handle getting them out of here. Although I do want to quickly point out before they go, um, Copernicus, the only reason that your Speak with Dead didn't work before is because it, you'd use it on these black-eyed uh, corpses. Oh, right. The dwarf corpses are normal-looking corpses. Hmm. Okay. Uh, before we send Gary off, do we want uh, the opportunity to um, interrogate one of the fallen? Um, I, can, I can assure you that this time, that last time was a fluke, never happens, won't happen this time. We should be able to have a perfectly normal and pleasant conversation with one from beyond that dustiest veil. So who's in? Uh, Morgan will. Arcana. Morgan's like in Arcana. So, I I believe I believe you're correct. I, I think in in this instance, uh, an interrogation 
of the departed will be safe. Morgan just wants the the uh, the goblins to be um, petrified and watch it happen one by one so that she can study it for like future arcana rolls to go, ah, I kind of understand how this works. So that's, what uh, we're doing. that's all she wants. That's speak of dead is just five questions. There's no no rolls here, but remember. I should, uh, proper form here. Um, I can neither turn us in, invisible nor um, if you're dead until I do a short rest. Right. Uh, so yep. can we do an hour, and then I'm also going to recover some hit dice. So in the interest of time here, but also I think uh, I want to point out that you you are still in pursuit of the, the goblins. And you don't know if they've gotten Sal to that city yet or if you're just still catching them. So you probably don't want to wait for too long, but you can easily grab the fallen... Uh, there's only the two dwarf corpses here, and one of them what you thought was the leader. So right. that particular corpse, you can just grab it and bring it with you. Like, Ugna's got plenty of... Um, yeah. Of capacity. Um, and then just carry on... Uh, and have that as an a, a attempted um, questioning at next opportunity. Well, sure. um, so Gary will go ahead oh, and... Uh, on the subject of, of safe words, if you will take a look at the, the back plate of my armor here, there's a, there's a, a bit, a, a loop, a steel loop that can be flipped out for hanging in lockers in the station. Oh, okay. um, you can grab that and I will just come along. Sounds good. Uh, I got a clip for that. <laughs> if you don't mind, I will flip it As up. As most I, I, game purposes, yeah. now Ugna can, in fact, quick draw the dwarf. Amazing. Nice. <laughs> Love it. nice. As really gay characters, we just have so many carabiners. We super both, do. Like, some of them are from, like, the adventurer pack, but most of them are pretty gay. They're just for flagging. Nice. Okay. Um... So you carry on in pursuit. Um, and you go further and further down. Um, I you're going to carry me as well so that I can short rest on the way. I, <laughs> I need them spell slots real bad. I'm, I'm happy to, to it's going to take, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm also going to do a little quick um, uh, retcon here because I don't think I want to keep Fetid fully written out for this because it's such a short game here. Um, so when you go and call Fetid, yeah, he, he, he comes back up the, the, the corridor with, uh, Olimandius having been scouting ahead a little bit. Um, and having him with you means that he can do all of his underdark tricks to evade traps yeah. and give you guys your, um, pass without trace. So you don't have to worry as much about running into creatures and monsters. And so you spend a number of hours um traveling deeper into the underdark um as you uh try to um catch up with these goblins um doing like a bit of a force march uh Harless and ugna both are extremely capable of a forced march uh you're carrying copernicus fenny is riding on ollie's back um and will invite uh, Morgan to join him. It's a large creature. Uh, although it, has, it, it smells a lot like sulfur and you may want to press to digitate a lot. Um, but it's okay. the, group, the group of you can make some pretty good time. Um, and with Fenid, uh, uh, with Fenid leading the way, he can certainly uh, evade all of the general uh, traps. So, for those who don't know, Fennet has the Dungeon Delver feet, uh, and it's his thing is to sort of get by the traps uh, and so forth. Um, he, um, I'm going to say that you've kept the, the kobold uh, unconscious prisoner as well, because Fennet wants to question him, um, just because I was kind of hoping to do a thing with Jeff and the kobolds, but uh, that'll allow that to happen next game. Um, so, uh, there are plenty of other monsters. You find several more narrowing corridors 
with lurking black puddings that Fetid leads you around uh, and manage, you manage to evade. Um, Hollis, of course, has his um, dwarven senses underground uh, to sort of know this corridor will eventually come back around to that one. So between those two knowledge bases of knowing the way around with Hollis and knowing the way around dungeon traps and monsters with Fetid, you're able to make your way deep into the Underdark under the Iron Peak Mountains. Um, and after um, hours, possibly days, of travel uh, with forced march, uh, I'm going to get everyone to roll me an exhaustion saving throw. Uh, that is constitution? Yes. Twenty-one. All right. Oh, here's hoping, here's hoping. Oh, that's not bad. Um, 18 over here. 15. 17 total. Ooh, nice. Okay. 17, 18. 25. Nice. Oh. <laughs> yep. That sounds about dwarf. Yep. It's just a walk in the rocky park. So you all manage to kind of get over long distances. You keep from wearing yourselves out uh, too much. Um, Copernicus, you will definitely have had your short rest uh, while being carried um, during this time. And no one has the disadvantage of exhaustion levels. Uh, when you eventually start getting into territories that, um, you know, Hollis doesn't even have it. Like, this is this is true Underdark. You're not, you're not in lands that the dwarves ever go to. Uh, these are the deeper places. Um, there are a few points where you have to stealth your way past um, uh, ambushes where the goblins have basically uh, lying in wait. But between um, uh, Fenid's Pass Without Trace uh, and various other options like your invisibility spells, uh, you're able to uh, ev evade uh, such things. And you eventually make your way uh, into parts of the Underdark that are effectively enormous caverns. Um, and you're basically walking through a mountain range underground of stalagmites. Um, and uh, instead of purely uh, goblins with black eyes, now the goblin ambushes become few and far between, but there are patrols of dwarves uh, down here, um, and the dwarves down here all, uh, if they are fully bearded, you can't see them, because they wear almost ninja-like scarves with their big dwarf noses sticking out, but uh, nothing else, just eyes and noses, uh, and the scarves wrapped around their heads, um, and no visible beards. Uh, maybe they cut them off or cut them very short. But uh, uh, it becomes clear that these are a culturally distinct group of dwarves uh, that live down here in the deep underdark. Um, and of course, Hollis, you recognize that these are Durogar. These are the lost, uh, the lost tribe of the dwarves. Um, uh, who, as you pointed out earlier, uh, you know they they have self direction. It's not like a a a, a uh, a race thing. Uh, it's simply that these are dwarves who turned to the worship of uh, demonic gods. So obviously, it's very possible for a dwarf down here to be like, I don't want to worry. You know, I'm an atheist, Durogar. I don't like that. Um, chances are good they would not survive. Um, so um, like it's a pretty called... safe bet. Cultural, the cultural pressure to yeah. act yeah. against the the the. <laughs> to act against good is strong. It's, it's a safe bet that any Durogar you see down here is an evil cultist, and that's the real problem. I mean, there's not... also, like, just, just your rank and file who will sacrifice a chicken on weekends, but they're not really into it, you know? 
<laughs> um, does game. the watcher's eye uh, background feature that I've got no local laws recognize criminals and cops mm -hmm. I assume that this is something that only kicks in after I've have, had the opportunity to see things in motion what I'm wondering is is that going to help me maybe predict the pattern of patrols a little bit so that we're a little yeah. more evasive? It's it's kind of staged, right? Like, you don't have a lot of information to go on here, but even just seeing some of these patrols, you quickly are like, yeah, this is a very militaristic society. These patrols that are going out here are regulated. They're, they're not just a band of randos wandering around. That's clearly, Us, like, yeah. a patrol... That's on the lookout. Probably not necessarily looking specifically for you guys. In fact, there are a lot less of those goblins down here. Like you, you, you bypassed a handful of attempted ambushes on your way down. Um, but now you're getting to a point where it's like, yeah, this is a territory that doesn't belong to those goblins, right? Uh, and you remember when you were uh, charmed when you had charmed that uh, um, that that uh, house Glacius dwarf. Um, he mentioned the mutual allies, um, and you're starting to maybe put a little picture together, and this will be relevant to your watcher's eye thing. Um, yeah, you sort of are getting this idea that the black-eyed goblins that have magic uh, um, possession on them that, that, that messed with attempts to speak with the dead and so on, they're probably servants of this dark sorcerer that was mentioned. And the mutual allies being mutual allies to the House Glacius rebels and to the sorcerer's goblins are the Durogar. Yeah. House, House so Glacius, very obviously. Yeah. House Gla Glacius sees uh, economic... Yeah, means to an end. ...and leverage yeah. in yeah. allying themselves with a group of dwarves who really won't be able to stomach the sunlight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's like three groups here. There's the 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 dwarves of Rockspire that are trying to over you know to to pull a coup, which are House Glacius. There's the Durgar who are enemies of the dwarves down here, the dwarves and then there's fall. this yeah, and then there's this uh, go between um, sorcerer with like black eyed goblin servants uh, who seems to have. You know, whether it's like a hired situation or has whatever mysterious goals of his own, uh, has sent the raiding party. But it is clear to you that this is where the raiding party is headed. Um, also, with Fetid leading the way here, you guys, I, I, I didn't think about all the tracking. Why don't you give me some, somebody roll dice for Fetid survival checks. Uh, and uh, with advantage because of 18? the scent. Sounds great to me. Yeah. Um, so with uh, with all you might, roll, roll the advantage roll, though, because you might nat 20. Who knows? Uh, I rolled a six on the advantage yeah. roll. So let's take the 18. So with all you uh, uh snuffling along, um, uh, you know, this, this hellhound that they seem to have bound to them that's like gives uh, Hollis the heebie-jeebies. Uh, for some that's reason, there's this very... This very happy demon hanging out with these people um, that uh, uh, Fetid rides around on. Um, but uh, between the scent that Olimandius picks up and Fetid's tracking skills, um, you know you're gaining on the group. You also can get an estimate as to the size of the, the group that you're now following. There's now maybe 10 of them after your attacks um you think that they've lost a few and gained a few in their attempts to set up ambushes there's been like a few left behind that you bypassed and but others have joined the party to bolster its ranks a little bit um but there are less than a dozen of them uh and occasionally in the march um uh fetid will be able to detect heavier footfalls of individuals who are burdened carrying something uh and you're fairly certain that uh as a prisoner sal is probably completely uh unconscious or tied up or immobilized in some way and being hauled around by these goblins rather than being forced to march 
Morgan um, is um, riding one of Ugna's shoulders, yeah. or oh, depending on the height that is available, uh, and if not, has uh, definitely fed a little um, uh, baggie of grapes and a little juice box to Perny in the in the little baby carrier. Yep. <laughs> We need we like, need a travois for um, get it. Ollie and for one for Uta, so we can just have these little like lay on beds behind them as they march along. Just those two characters carry the rest of the party, so everyone can get rests in. Yeah. So yeah, we're not. He actually can't digest properly, but he, it's so sweet that you're doing this. So he's like fake eating it, but like tucking <laughs> it down his shirt or whatever for a while until he has like the grapes start to leak out around his stomach as they start to like accrue around where his suspenders hit his very tight waistband. Um, just like every like other baby. Just, just, just like he's just like stuffing away. Maybe he's like tossing it to Ollie. <laughs> oh no, that grapes are very poisonous to dogs. That's oh true. no! Yeah. It's oh, fine no. as a hellhound. <laughs> Nothing is poisonous to him. Okay, great. Um, definitely over to Ollie. Or Fetid, for that matter. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can, like, massage Pony's shoulders and, like, squirt a squirt bottle in his mouth that he can then spit into the bucket that he's got. Um, and, uh... Well, when, when Barb and I do spitting stuff, we do it privately. No! Okay. Um... So, what I want to know now is, as you're getting pretty close to your, your quarry, but you're also in uh, enemy territory, what is your preferred strategy here? Are you going to try to just follow them to wherever they're taking Sal, and then go with the, what if we go invisible and sneak in and try and break them out of the enemy city? Or are you going to try and haul ass and overtake them uh, using your various dungeon mastery here to try and cut them off uh, and try and rescue Sal before these goblins make it to um, uh, to the, the dwarf fortress. I think cutting them off is a good first resort and then infiltrating is a good second. If anyone, uh, does anyone else agree with that? Agreed? Oh, I, I absolutely agree. Agreed. I will say the one trade-off is that if you are uh, going that route, you're, it's riskier, right? Because that's, you're not going very quietly and stealthily through the Dwarven territory. You're going to be going hard to try and cut these guys off and catch them. So that's the basic trade-off. Is you're, you're taking greater risk as you go through enemy territory, but you could potentially rescue Sal before uh, he's actually locked away in, in a in a that fortress. Seems preferable. I have a hard time believing that there is less risk involved in breaking a prisoner out of the middle of a dwarven fortress than there is in making haste to prevent him from being locked up in the first place. Oh, oh! Speaking of, do you have any more of those uh, those handcuffs? <laughs> I'm I, I'm afraid at at, at the, uh, the the anticipatory face you're making right now. Well, there's uh, a lot of uses. I, for sure. Yeah, they do. They, on, on this on this, you and I are, are in agreement. I have two more pairs, uh, and I wish to retain them for the time being. Well, I was gonna say, um, I think that. Uh, uh, Tromlin or Fetid would do really well to have a pair that they can sleight of hand on someone should they get the chance. Uh, they would be better at doing something like that and yes. kind of going up. Tromlin, hey, forgive me. I, 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 I completely misinterpreted your approach. Uh, <laughs> yes. That, that, oh, yeah. I mean, for those, like, we can do that after we finish the mission. I, honestly, I, I have a supply of uh, much less expensive, uh, but much more comfortable uh, manacles. That's good. Uh, he, he has a card for uh, Bed Bath & Beholder. 
Oh, nice. I have a couple of those 30% off coupons. I keep forgetting to use them. Uh, Purdy usually shops at Bloodbath and Beyond. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a favorite of Barb's. She had quite the loyalty card punched up there. Lane, has Traumon reappeared at all? Or is he still poofed nope. out into the fairy wilds? Nope. He disappeared into the mists and shadows of the Feywilds. We heard him and talking you know that because you, seen... you and Copernicus were able to overhear him speaking yeah. to something. To so some child. And Morgan um, told you after you all arrived that there was some kind of problem in the Feywilds. Right. So I've just yeah. mentally written him off as in the Feywilds again. He'll show up at some point. Yeah, um, though... Uh, Perny, we should discuss some of what we experienced in the uh, possessing. I didn't really understand what was being said before I was compulsed, but you, since you also experience it and we are both incredibly smart, um, we could probably parse out some of it and figure out a little bit of its source. Uh, and how do we could possibly counter it? Um, so I'm just gonna uh, suggest shooting the shit a little bit um, on what we were able to understand using message to say things that we'd heard, or at least the, the closest to what we heard um, before going out, going under. What I heard was um, similar to the language of the desert of it. Um, which would put the source somewhere in the east. Um, but what, what... Morgan's writing notes and wrote I C K S Desert of Ix, um, and of she'll Ix. she'll repeat <laughs> horribly probably um, what she heard with her mouth as best she can. But we'll send uh, a message via PernyNet, um, trying to. Yes. To give the best impression of what it was. Um, we triangulate anything from that. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's, Could I, here's more Wendell, and here's the Desert of Ix, sort of generally. Could I performance to try and communicate this? I mean, it's up to you. This is between the players. Yeah. Uh, just, I'll, I'll do a performance roll to try and... Um, best oh. convey what I'd heard. Go ahead. And Aluna, did you want to pull up the bigger world map? Oh, sure. I just want to impress that the Desert of Ix, there's that city of Direwind there on the edge of the desert, which is where trade goes through. I got a 19 on my performance roll. Throw an arcana on that so I can figure out what's going on from that. I got a 25. Desert of Ix is very large. Yeah. And we only so I just want people to see how there. extensive the Desert of Ix extends to the east. It starts here, but it goes oh. all the way yeah. over. And we're under that? No, not at the moment. You're somewhere deep under the Rock Spire Mountains. Yeah, and, we're sort of still up here. Um, you would probably know... Uh, Hollis, that uh, just from direction sense of being... A dwarf underground, uh, that you've come a fair ways east, that you're like near the, near the foothills. We'll go back to the previous map there, Lena. We can, I can point it out, folks. Um, now, sorry, what was trying to, what was being conveyed? You guys both made roles there, but I'm not sure yeah. I understand. Uh, I did a, a 19 to <laughs> performance, um, to try and communicate best what my possession was like, what I'd heard in the during the possession, either by mouth or by um, the perny net. Are you referring um, to the, then the, the, these otherworldly uh, noises that, are, that, that you didn't understand? Yeah, so that we can try and arcana history um, I think our, those to prompt the role. Yeah, yeah those roles are pretty good. You're not going to be able to interpret but at least, I think, Copernicus, you will believe that that was, like, abyssal tongue. Like, that was that was somebody doing, like, some, you know, serious nefarious magic. Yeah. Okay. I will communicate that along. 
And subversary. <laughs> subversary. You suck. Great. You suck, fucking Raven. You're a player. And they're the subversary. <laughs> so I think as you're attempting to overtake uh, more quickly, I think to finish off here for uh, uh, tonight's game, what we'll do is we'll make a series of rolls to s determine uh, how successfully you're able to do that uh, without attracting attention. Uh, from the guard patrols. Awesome. So, uh, number one, I'll get a roll from Hollis on sort of your underground uh, wayfinding. Let's call that a survival roll with advantage. So I know you only have a plus two, but you have advantage on the roll being a dwarf. Okay. Um... 18 plus, I've got plus two. four in survival, so 22. Oh, was I looking at the wrong character? No, I was. Yeah, you're better. I was looking at Copernicus's survival. Yeah, you had a plus four. Um, cool, so excellent. Um, and let me get a roll uh, from someone to roll for Fetid. Uh, and we'll get the... Um, his survival check in order to uh, kind of get ahead of these uh, uh, of your prey, uh, and this is not with uh, the sniffer of Caper of uh, Olimandius mattering. So just a straight survival roll. Who's rolling, and what do you got? I'll roll. All right. I rolled a two. With I'll plus spend one of my inspirations on that. Sure. Do you have any left? Oh, uh, no, fetid never does. mind. Can we spend a fetid? <laughs> Sorry, fetid. I won't spend a fetid. Yeah. Um, with also the knowledge that that was only two more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And now everybody roll me a stealth roll individually and add an extra 10 because of these pass without trace that fetid is giving you all. Twenty-seven. 31. Holy shit! For Twenty-one is the low one so far, and then someone roll for uh, Hollis. I still need a stealth roll, and someone else I need to roll for Fetid. I rolled bad. Someone else. I rolled a seven for <laughs> Fetid. Right. Which is still not great, Kay. but maybe not as bad as you rolled. Yeah. My stealth roll is flat, but it's a fifteen. And then you get a plus ten for the 25. pass without trace. Oh. So that's a twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. I'll take it. Uh, Fanon has a plus eight, so that becomes a twenty-five as well. Nice. So twenty-one is the low. Stealth. Seven becomes a so twenty-one is the low roll um, for stealth, and with the twelve survival, Fetid is having a little bit of difficulty evading patrols, um, but your stealth is good. Um, so I'm going to roll now to see if any of these patrols overcome that 21 stealth. Okay. So, Fede is trying to overtake these goblins before they get to the Dwarven city. Um, and uh, between Hollis's knowledge and, and wayfinding underground and his uh, survival dungeoneering tricks, uh, you manage to evade any, any immediate traps, but you're not really gaining on your quarry. Um, and then, as you approach, uh, you you get to a point where the the stalagmite mountain range that you're passing through suddenly opens into a massive ravine that plunges even deeper into the underdark, like a giant axe. Uh, of some impossible mountain giant had cleft uh, the very uh, stalagmites in twain. And in that huge cleft, there is a ridge of hanging stalactites, uh, the central one of which is impossibly huge, uh, like, a, like a veritable mountain above ground hanging downwards into this cleft. And you can see... Um, 
these dim purple lights glowing in various caves and caverns uh, and windows uh, carved and built into this spire. You can see uh, almost uh, like steps spiraling around this huge stalactite um, with other smaller stalactites like towers hanging around. You can see weapons and ballistae uh, sticking out here and there as this like insane, absolutely impossible upside down dwarf fortress hangs from the ceiling of this impossibly huge cavern. Um, Hollis, you, this could not have been built in any way but magic. Um, you know, this is all stone shaping. So uh, visually, what what you're magic. talking about here is more like more like the Hollow Earth scenes from yeah. uh, Kong v Godzilla. Uh, yeah. Or Godzilla v Kong. I never remember which one to put first. Yep. Okay. Except except Dwarven. Um, and with these eerie purple glows of magic, you can also see flying around and circling the the city uh various um patrolling winged demons um and you recognize uh copernicus that there are uh handfuls of vox um flying around uh, uh these demonic winged beasts um Bad. and uh as you are taking stock, you see in the valley below you as it goes uh, drops away, uh, you can see a party of uh, goblins uh, with their kobold outrunners uh, sniffing their way along, um, several of which, uh, probably a total of eight of them, have over their shoulders uh, these poles with uh, uh, something uh, bound up in between that they're hustling along. Um, their numbers have swollen a bit more. There's a little over a dozen of them now, um, probably about 16. There's about equal numbers carrying uh, the burden as there are marching along, and they're rushing as quickly as they can, looking absolutely exhausted towards this fortress. Um, but just do down below. A brief cinematic um, moment before we wrap. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so there's there's a cut to that, and then there's a cut back to the group, and then a cut in on Ogna's eyes, uh, just as she go whispers, Sal, and then like a flame kindles in her eyes. Uh, and we'll cut back to her taking out her uh, bone crusher mask and just pulling it on. Oh hell yeah! And the eyes go like steely flat. Mm -hmm. Um, and at this point, several things happen. One, Ugna actually starts, um, uh, giving quiet orders. Like I've been looking it out in my head the entire run. About, you know, Fetimali, you're going around this way. You, you, uh, Hollis, you're with me. I'm carrying you down. Uh, you, you know, we're going to get close like we did before. Like, all of this, and I want a uh, a role from Copernicus and Morgan because you two know Ugna well enough. Um, this is going to be a insight check, which I know Morgan is very good at. I'm very bad. Thirteen. Let's see, let's Morgan. see. Uh, that's a 12 plus. Okay, your plus is huge. I think you got a plus 10 for insight. It's like yeah. 22. <laughs> uh, plus 9. So 21. Yeah, um, okay. It suddenly, this is so weird and unlike Udna, but also so sudden. It kind of starts coming together for you that you realize ugna has been acting really weird and random for a long time now where sometimes Ugna seems to be more competent than you're used to and sometimes less um, 
and sometimes more squeamish. And it's very strange. And you don't have much time to think about it because at that moment, you're all overwhelmed by this crazy stench. Oh, no. Uh, and I need everyone to make a DC 14 constitution save. <laughs> Easily made. <sighs> 17. <laughs> That's the sound you're making uh, if you fail the constitution save. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be a five. So I've got a fail from Copernicus, a fail from Morgan, a success from Una, and a success from Hollis. Okay, um, somebody roll me for uh, Fetid, and we don't need to roll for Ollymandias. Oh, okay. Uh, Fetid gets a 10 on the die. Uh, I might give him advantage on this, although I think Fetid's bonus... Yeah, his constitution bonus isn't great, but I'm going to give him advantage on this roll. For the Stink Master. Yeah. I'll let another die for the second roll. Still not going to do it. Okay. So Fennin is effect as well. And all of you who kept that scent and failed that roll uh, have the poisoned condition for the next round, oh, no. which means disadvantage on all rolls. Um, as a huge form rises out of the rocks and what appeared to be a jagged boulder uh, becomes a huge demon that was sheltering uh, or blocking the view of a group of uh, Derogar patrol uh, who immediately shout upon seeing you. And that is where we're going to pick up next game. Oh, boy. Uh, and you recognize uh, Copernicus um, Ahesru, uh, a large fiend That's bad. Uh, demon. Contrary okay. to popular opinion, dwarves of the of the uh, the stone skill lines are not, in point of fact, constitutionally capable of shitting bricks. <laughs> but I have just done that. And that's it for this game. Uh, uh, Howard, I don't know what your schedule is like. You'd be welcome to join us for another session. Uh, well, the next I section is I will be yeah. at the uh, WXR uh, event in the latter half of September. I think after about September 16th, I think. Next session will be before then. So um, I, I, I should be able to squeeze it in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think the plan right now for next session is the first full week of September or the second depending on, on uh, Peter's move and a few other things as to how that timing works out. Um, but we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll figure it out. Lane, so, a... um, I actually. have, I do have a conflict on the 12th. Is today Thursday? Is that yeah. when we do this? We only do this, we've been doing Tuesdays lately. We just couldn't do it this week. So we did Thursday. Tuesdays? Yeah, it would likely be the 3rd or the 10th would be the next game. What am I rolling in? My calendar uh, says those days are empty, but I shall, I shall have words with Sandra and see if my calendar is... As is, empty as you think? Yeah, is, <laughs> is lying to me. What am I rolling in? 1d10. D10. Yep. I have rolled a 7. Uh, that is MLIS Revenge. MLIS Revenge, you are going to be receiving artwork from our illustrious artists. Um, and I just want to uh, remind the audience, of course, that subscribers are always entered into the art draw uh, every game. Um, so please do feel free to subscribe uh, if you haven't already. Uh, I know Twitch is changing the rules, so... Hopefully, it doesn't uh, screw anybody up too bad. Yeah. Um, but uh, it is out of our control. Um, yeah, has anyone have anything to shout out? Any any upcoming projects or appearances anyone wants to shout out? I'll give Howard the, uh, the first dibs here. You just mentioned where you're going to be in September. Uh, I'm going to be on the, the, at the WXR uh, retreat, which is 
sold out on a cruise ship that's going to Mexico. So shouting it out would just be a humble yeah. brag that makes everybody feel bad that they can't come along. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to say is go visit the websites of these other fine folks that I've had the opportunity to play uh, with because this is fun and I like getting to do it. And thank you so much. It's always a delight. Thank you for we, this time. We cut back to the Dwarven Lands. Hell yeah, better. Yeah. Anybody else want to shout something out while we're wrapping up the stream? Um, uh, Raven and I. Oh, go ahead, Peter. No, you got it. You got it. I was going to say, Raven and I will be at the Museum of Vancouver on August 30th uh, doing the <clears throat> launch party for Indigenous Nerds. So if you happen to be in the greater Vancouver area, cool. come on by. Um, it is unfortunately $12, but that is the admission to the museum. Uh, so if you come early, you can spend all day in the museum if you want, and then just hang out afterwards for our meet and greet with myself, Raven, and Jordana George, who's one of our other contributors to the book. And then we'll be copies for sale. I think they're going to serve like treats or something. I got to ask if I need to bring Bannock or whatever, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be a real swanky little night. So hopefully see you there. Cool. Uh, and Peter? I've, I've got a live stream that I'm doing tomorrow for the Story Engine deck. We're going to be unveiling the final form of the Lore Masters deck. We've shown off the print sample, the digital print sample, but we finally have the actual deck that we're going to be shipping to people in a couple of months. So we're going to do oh, that's uh, awesome. an unveiling, and then we're also going to do some live um, lore creation where the chat votes on uh, which prompts to use. So it's always a lot of fun, and you can find that at, at Story Engine Deck on YouTube or uh, Facebook is where we'll be streaming live. And I should probably mention um, uh, that Alina and I will be at uh, PAX yeah. uh, as well next weekend. Um, Alina won't be there on uh, Friday the 30th because that's when the Indigenous launch is. Uh, but you can uh, get Wear Geek merch at the uh, Nomnivore booth that I will be uh, uh, working at for the weekend. Uh, and hopefully we might do some panels or something. We don't know. It's a last minute kind of kind of deal. But if not, I'll be at least taking some time to wander around and see the sites because it's been at least ten years since I've been to a PAX. Yeah, if you're there, come say hi. And uh, of course, as always, uh, check out questionable content and something positive and Popeye and check out everybody's websites, schlockmercenary.com and Two Spirit Trickster and Weather Geek, Story Engine. And join the Discord. We always have a bunch of really cute art yes. updated there often uh, by us and by people in our wonderful community. Uh, yep. I just posted to my TikTok um, as well a uh, pimp named Slickback animation of uh, Morgan it's so good. sliding it's nice. around the battlefield. <laughs> that is worth signing up to the Discord for. It's. I was so weirded. I was weirded by the animation, and then I played it with the sound, and I was like, yes. "Oh, oh, yes, <laughs> so good." <laughs> Thank you so Thanks much for coming. For Thank you, audience. Uh, we'll see you next time, chat. Bye. Bye. Bye.